you're up early, the comment says from Yagit, and absolutely true, early I am, because it's the final day of action in the APAC region here for the Queso Cup Fall Split. Hello and welcome, I'm Rich Slayton. Day six on its way. A few more spots left to be decided right now. Pandora, Elsiop, Jack, Line, Sandbox, and Yuya all currently in a spot to move on to the playoffs, but a few players nipping at their heels. Greco, higher, maybe even KK, Jupiter King if he's lucky, all trying to push their way up into that top six. Take one of those spots, move on to the next stage of this tournament, and of course, that is not an easy task. A few players probably already eliminated, but we will be seeing them, I believe, today, depending, of course, if they do finish out their tournaments. Either way, though, we have one heck of a lineup today, and this is going to be interesting, right? You have some of the players here who are already qualified for CRO World Finals, a very different competition, obviously, for those of you, but uh, some players who are going to be taking a shot at that quarter of a million dollars and some players who are not involved in that at all, and this is their shot at glory at this month. So we'll see who can get it done and who is done in this competition. Good morning, everybody. Oh, I thought I had the cow licked. I thought I had the cow lick licked this morning, but it's still there. See the flip? Oh, oh, I was so I was so happy that it didn't it wasn't there, and then I didn't put any I didn't put anything in my hair, and it the corner flipped down, and here we are with the flip in the morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is the Queso Cup Fall Split. I'm Rich Slayton. I'll be your caster for the morning or the evening or whatever time of day it is for you, wherever you are. Here to go through this really, really great competition. And let's go ahead and waste no time. Right out the gate, top tier competition, Sandbox and LCOP. Let's go. Clash Royale Esports in the building. Good morning and hello to everybody. And here we go. Two players who you... Uh, well, probably you're pretty familiar with if you follow competitive Clash Royale. Sandbox currently ranked number, I want to say four. Is it four or three? Check in on that Royale API standings here in just one moment in the Clash Royale League standings going towards our World Finals. Elsiop, of course, a multiple-time World Finalist, has participated in every World Finals for Clash Royale League. Although this one might be a slightly different story, or never mind, he's 24th. He is definitely gone trade. So, LC Apple have participated in every single CRL World Finals for this entire year. Or for the entire run of Clash Royale League. But today, trying to make his way through to the next stage of the Queso Cup, in a pretty good spot, 7-4, and four, but of course, 7-4, and four, all those 7-4s and fours are in danger of Greco, Higher, or KK having a good run and taking that spot, so... You want to close out strong here, and same thing for Sandbox. This is the kind of match that could put one of them in danger of being knocked out from the competition, so we'll see. And pretty classic variation of Graveyard from Sandbox. Curious to see if he's running Tombstone or Bomb Tower. Tombstone is certainly old school, but has been popping up a bit as of late since being recently buffed a tiny and Royal Hogs down for LCOP and it's bomb tower for Sandbox so that's a whole lot better in this matchup and of course this deck for Sandbox does cycle relatively quickly so he'll be able to keep up with those pigs presumably the only question is does he need those at all for the Royal Recruits? Does have a big spell, so can deal with Flying Machine, although not the ideal methodology. And here we go, to the left-hand side, Flying Machine down. NATO's all of that together, so Flying Machine does go to the Bomb Tower. And of course now, what does he do about this next Pig's Push? Doesn't get the protection down for Sandbox to keep the Ice, the ice Wiz on the board. That's a rough one there. And again, you know, you talk, we, we talk about this a lot, but one of the cards that most abuses dual format right there. The Flying Machine, a.k.a. the Ceiling Fan. Absolutely brutal in these dual mode matchups. And oh no for Sandbox. The Fireball comes out to target the Ice Wiz, and the Bomb Tower goes to the exact same spot. Still in the lead. But man, 
not exactly what he wanted to do on that defensive sequence. 3-3 three, three split for the six man here. As we go into the final 90 seconds of sudden death overtime, it is Sandbox in the lead against the former CRL world champion, but this is potentially a precarious position. Graveyard in, Baby Dragon high. Bomb Barb Barrel does come out to protect, but not going to protect that much. So that now the Zappies have to do the same thing. And this is just brutal for Elsia. Now this is where things start to get a little interesting, but no, the control the, the control of these flying machines has been really expertly done by Sandbox. And notice now trying to build up from the back, play some defense, and then also turn it into a push, but that's going to be too little too late. Sandbox with a nice win here to open things up. GG well played sandbox with game number one. Well, you know, you talk about tough matchups, and that's a brutal one there for LCOP. Of course, sandbox playing the defense part of it very, very nicely. So well done for sandbox, and that's why he's one of the top players in the world right now. But man, if you're on LCOP's side, and that's again, people talk about the, the rising skill cap of Clash Royale where obviously Sam, um, LCOP is capable of winning that matchup against regular human players, right? But up against a player, caliber player like Sandbox, he's just not going to get it done in that situation. It's really, really unlikely and really, really difficult for anything like that to happen. So a tough outing there for LCOP in game one, of course, does have some more to go. Give me one second, folks. Let's see, taking a look at the chat here for a moment. Sandbox is going to win, I think, says Big Gorilla. Um, OP Sandbox says Kumar. And uh, yeah, L70 is rely on the flying machine. And that was the big thing. The flying machine was absolutely huge, really, really important. But um, one of those things where, man, yeah, yeah, if you can't get past the, the lockdown defense and the use of the NATO Baby Dragon, specifically the Ice Wiz was in there, but really the use of the NATO Baby Dragon to control the flying machine action was really, really critical for Sandbox. Here we go back into game number two. Let's see if LCOP can turn his fortunes around. And one second, let me check with... Uh... Oh, Oyasu's not answering his calls, guys. So we'll see if Oyasu does show up for his matches. He is eliminated from the next phase. So uh, we'll see if Oyasu does show up for his games. But right now, though, you have two of the best in the business in a, th let's see, three-time world cha uh, three -time world finalist, world champion, five-time CRL China and CRL East champion in Nova's LCOP, and then in the young powerhouse Sandbox, currently entering world finals number three on the global leaderboard. And Lightning on defense shuts that down. So it's Pigs for Sandbox this time out. And he's going up against Bomb Tower Snowball. <laughs> so we have seen some more Minor Musk Loon as of late. Yesterday we saw someone in NA play it. I can't remember who it was. I don't believe, I can't remember if they played arrows in that variant or not. As you can see the value here and <laughs> yeah, Sandbox going, okay, sure. But one thing you'll notice about the current Minor Musk variation, you know, I think that one was running Barb Barrel as opposed to Snowball, is Snowball Bomb Tower right now. And keep an eye on this throughout the day. And, we, you know, we talk about uh, the, the various things that really kind of define competitive Clash Royale right now. 
And uh, on one hand, we talk about the flying machine a lot being this very abused card in dual modes. One of the ones that takes advantage of dual mode as much as possible. On the other hand, think about we, we talk about how important it is to 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 look at the danger of royal hogs. And so notice that deck number one that Sandbox ran strong against royal hogs. Deck number two that Elsiop is running good royal hog counters built in there. Although this variation giving him some significantly more trouble than we saw out of his compatriot in the previous matchup. And those Skeleton Dragons ripping that left-hand tower. And just as I'm saying that, Elsiop gets overwhelmed. The Mega Knight and the Skeleton Dragons giving him trouble. But notice he had two, two Royal Hogs counters here in the Bomb Tower and the Snowball. Royal Hogs certainly a uh, game mode defining card. And as you see there, Sandbox, able to break on through and take full advantage. 2-0 here. And that's going to put LC Op in a tough spot. Bit of an overcommitment. And that's what Yocho Fan is saying here. LC Op overcommitted 100%. And that's Clash Royale for you. You stretch yourself too thin and boom, GG well played. And uh, Yocho saying, let's see. It was, uh, oh, H saying it was Sergio Ramos playing it with Stab Goblins yesterday. There you go. Sergio Ramos was playing some uh, some minor Muscaloon, kind of going classic, but with a bit of an early, but with a bit of a variation. And uh, yes, that was pretty easy. Um, wait, there we go. That was pretty easy for Sandbox. Absolutely true. So guys, we'll keep an eye on whether Oyasu does show up for his matches today or not. Not entirely sure. Um, he is scheduled for. One, two, he's scheduled for two matches today, but now that he's pretty much out of the running, we'll see if he does come in, come in and actually finish his gameplay. But uh, that was LC Ops Sandbox. Um, I think up next is going to be Yuya and Jupiter King. That should be the next on our schedule, so I'll keep you guys posted, of course. And Hussein asking, how many trophies need to go in this tournament? Um, well, it's not really about specifically how many trophies. So this tournament, the Queso Cup, is a mixture of invited pros and people who made it in through open qualifiers. This variation in particular has both a premier or first division and a second division that you can uh, you can get into or out of based on performance. But uh, the big thing here is, yeah, most of the players are invited pros. There are open qualifiers fairly regularly for these events, just like this one. These ones, of course, are already passed. But keep your eye out. You can keep an eye on. Let's see if my buttons are working today. Ooh, did that just go to actually go to my, or did, or did it just go to Twitch? Didn't go to YouTube. Hmm. I thought that would go to YouTube as well. But let me go ahead and grab that link from Twitch and throw it into here. Boom. Um, that's weird. Was that what it was? That was not what it's supposed to be. Oh, let me go ahead and remove that, folks. That was not the link I was trying to post. There we go. Um, you can go, I'll go ahead and get the link out there. You can go to various Twitters. Let me just go ahead and I can bring it this way. Um, I usually repost when there are open qualifiers, so lots of chances for you to compete as well. And, um, let's see, next up is going to be Yuya versus Jupiter. Yuya versus Jupiter, everybody. So I don't, we don't think we have a mod yet on Twitch, so once we do, we'll start getting the, uh, the predictions up. But once we do, yeah, Yuya versus Jupiter. And that's going to be a fun one as well. Caden Collins saying hi. And OP mod Sandy in the building with the big reminders. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and use code RICH in all Supercell games. And if you don't use code RICH, use someone's code. There's a lot of good codes out there. Um, I'm partial to code RICH for various reasons, including but not limited to. That's mine. That's my code. So go ahead and use code RICH. But let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Jupiter King versus Yuya. Cheddar asking who I think will win CRL Worlds. And... As I said yesterday, I don't think it's really hard to... Uh, I think it's too hard to predict that. It's much too hard. I can give you who I think has good chances. Has the best chances, but... To predict who will actually win? Too much. Too much indeed. And Yuya coming out with Classic Witch in game number one. We have seen a bit more Classic Witch lately. Not, of course, as much as we saw in the Witch meta of 2019, but certainly more Classic Witch since the recent balance changes. And minor E-barbs to the right-hand side. Cage up to the task.
and Royal Hog split down the middle. And going to give a little bit extra juice to that right-hand side. That Brawler's going to be an issue. That Brawler's going to be a huge issue. Fishboy, not going to do enough. And that is an absolutely shredded tower on the right-hand side. Yuya in a lot of trouble. 9.06. And look at that. The Hunter on the left. So both lanes get brutalized. And Jupiter King with a really opportunistic push. Getting in front of the pretty much one-shot troops. And absolutely crushing it. Yuyu with an interesting minor wall breakers variation. Not sure about the fish of the the fish boy and witch combination here. And haven't seen a building yet out of Yuya, which... And there comes the Mega Knight. So that's his plan for the Royal Hogs in this matchup, is the MK, but the split lane has definitely nerfed the abilities there of that in these moments. King Tower activation does come in, and Wall Breakers get shut down, and it looks like it's too much for Yuya in this one. Sent nine Elixir early on in single with the minor E-Barbs pushed to the right-hand side and ended up not working out too well for him. This ain't 5K on ladder, folks. You send nine Elixir down in single against a strong competitive player and the chances of that working out well are pretty, pretty low by comparison. Wall breakers in, delivery, is it available? And pff, Cage just barely gets there. Sudden death overtime, and Jupiter King going to always split here. Never going to go all one lane. And Mega Knight has to choose its poison, pick its poison for the proper alliteration. And, oh, uh, well, poisonous it is. GG well played. Jupiter King taking game number one here. Whew. Yeah, that's, uh, I wish we had replay here because that early moment going with the, oh, I guess we uh, we don't have the standard music there. That early moment going with the Elite Barbarian's minor push into the right-hand lane, maybe, just maybe, just a little bit too much for that one. And uh, yeah, yeah, you extend yourself that thin, and he paid for it, and paid for it big time. So that was weird, says I am Levante. Yuya's deck was, um, well, there were miners. There was a miner. There were wall breakers. And E-Barbs aren't that weird of minor wall breakers these days, but the Witch and the Fisherman just a little bit interesting in this matchup. And here's the interesting thing about that, right, is that now you've taken out uh, most Royal Giant decks. And so that makes things pretty easy here for Jupiter King. Now he can eliminate Royal Giant. Um, he can eliminate most. He's unlikely to see. You're not going to see classic Lava Loon, although that'd be an interesting switch from Yuya to go with a classic style Lava Loon rather than Lava Loon Minor, which is much more popular these days. Um, but you definitely, you most likely take Royal Giant out, unless, of course, Yuya stays off meta. Um, which could be interesting, but, you know, it's one of those factors where now you go, now if you're Yuya, you kind of have you kind of have to stick with either going off meta or go with something predictable that now Jupiter King has good information to build a deck against. So really, really challenging situation here for him against, uh, against a very, very talented young man. Um, does Clash Royale give money to the final winner? Tell Slow, please, I am from India. Uh, there's a big prize pool. I think this one is... I want to say $32,000 prize pool. I have to check the rules for this event again. But yes, there is money. This is uh, There is a prize pool for this event, and it's pretty darn big. So uh, it's something. It's somewhere between thirty dollars and $40,000. I can't remember which one it is. Um, let's see. Yuya couldn't get that damage as King Pete, and that's absolutely true. Yuya unable to really break through in any meaningful way, and um, that can be the frustration. Hey, Sandy coming through with the... Nine pound super chat. Let's go. Coffee and burritos time. Yeah, it's always coffee and burritos time. Although waiting on coffee because my coffee machine is very loud and my kid is very asleep. Wall breakers split at the bridge to open things up here for Jupiter King. And picked up pretty easily by the cage. So you see the cards played in game number one. None of those available for those players in game number two.
Inferno Dragon certainly gets some extra value when Electro Spirit is gone and no King Tower activation. Yuya tries to go for it with the Bomber and doesn't get it. Instead gives up a ton of damage. And now this, this Electro Giant should get pretty heavily shredded here by the E-Barbs and Mother Witch, and it does. Plus that Inferno Dragon can be taken care of. So you saw the zap, a nice zap out of Jupiter King. Maybe getting a good read here, knowing that the E-Spirit was out, and that makes uh, Inferno Dragon more viable. And so he, had to, he wanted to make sure he had a good reset in there. And rather than going with the E-Wiz, goes with the zap. And then, man, that attempt to activate King Tower from Yuya. The Mega Knight did not quite leap far enough inside, and so the bomber played to the far right hand side of the or to the right hand side of the king, not in range to pull. And you see the results here. This is dual mode for those of you listening at home or watching at home. Who's listening? Anybody here want listen to this on radio purely? On KFPK Morning Clash. I guess it'd be like KF KWCR, Morning Clash Royale Radio. Wallbreaker to the left-hand side. Yuya does pick up with the cage, but man, this is rough for him. Now, keep in mind, this is actually really important. Jupiter King only has Zap as direct damage spells. He's not going to Zap cycle from this stage. That's insanity. So it's he has to get Miner on Tower or something else, obviously. And the Dark Prince here to hold, but, me ooh, Mega Knight nearly. Look at that, how close that is to getting splash damage on tower. And it turns, and that's it. GG. Rough outing here for Yuya. Who, weird off meta choice in game number one, and weird not strong in the meta right now choice in game number two. So two picks back to back out of Yuya that are suspicious. Does he have lightning? He NATOs together, but that's made too much DPS to survive. Two strange choices deck-wise from Yuya. Electro Giant, not that strong right now after the 4% health nerf. And of course, the first deck was uh, a little bit of a wow in that first deck, as you can see on the right-hand side. So, rough outing here. And uh, GG Kotix with the six months of Twitch of subscriptions on Twitch. Thank you so much. Hey, yo, Rich, thanks for the content and for waking up so early. Wish you the best. GG. Hey, GG, thank you so much. Six months of Twitch Prime subs. Wow. That is, uh, that, that's really, really cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. Glad I can bring you some great Clash Royale early in the morning. Some of you might say, Rich, it's not the morning. Well, that's where you are. I don't know if you know this, but there are uh, different time zones um, throughout the world. When it's 4 a.m. here, it might be 4 p.m. where you are. What? Yeah. So here in Texas, it is 625 in the morning. So wherever you are, uh, if it's good morning, good morning. If it's good afternoon, good afternoon. If it's good evening, good night, all that stuff. I'll do the full uh, the full Truman Show. Uh, good morning. If I can't say I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. So, yeah, we're worldwide today. And I don't know where you're watching from. Um, I know some of you are watching on YouTube. Some of you are watching on Twitch. So if you're in the chat on one of those two, go ahead and let me know. Where are you watching from? I know I've seen people already here from India this morning, from Australia, people from all over waking up to watch some great Clash Royale, or still awake. Um, and here we go. Next up is Rad versus Line. Igor, um, I guess, working on something. He'll be he'll be in a little bit later. Um, but Rad versus Line will be our next matchup. So I don't know if we have any Twitch uh, mods on right now, but looking like it's not. But uh, yeah, it's going to be Rad versus Line for our next one. So look at this. We have um, from Singapore watching right now. A lot of the fans here for the APAC region, obviously. Um, 8 a.m. in Indonesia. 8 a.m. in Indonesia says B96er. So there you go. It's 7.25 p.m. in Hong Kong. And 4 a.m. in California. Woo! Russian BMX crew woke up just for me. My word. From Hungary says I am Levante. Man, we are worldwide today. Germany! Syria! Just keep your eye right up here. All the fun places we're watching from. And Lisbon. I don't know if I've had a Lisbon, someone watching in Lisbon before. That's pretty cool. Uh, Lightning Leaker just speaking for all of Europe with it being 1 p.m. I don't know if you know about this, but Europe is um, w wider than you think, potentially. Um, let's see. In Malaysia, Australia. Oh, people are just flying. And let's go ahead and jump into our first game of our next one. 
And this guy going with the real uh, with the real pretty one. Earth. This player just says Earth. Ooh, getting, getting some viewers from Kazakhstan as well. Here we go, guys. Someone from Finland. Supercell in the building. So Miner goes to the outside corner. Does not get picked up by the Royal Ghost. Heal Spirit. Cycle to the right, so maybe thinking Hogs here. Oh, no. Bridge Spam with Heal Spirit. Interesting. Heal Spirit is an interesting choice to go into a Bridge Spam deck. And then Miner in a... Every other piece here looks like Graveyard. Except for Miner from Line. Line, the no-tilt world champion from 2020. Which was a big worldwide everyone entered competition. Almost kind of like a precursor to CRL 2021 in some ways. People still maybe um, underestimate how just how good Line is. But I'll tell you, he is uh, a top-notch player. And currently, Line is qualified for Clash Royale League World Championships, number 18 on the leaderboard, with $24,000 in earnings in 2021. And King Tower activation fails, and that's a big rip here for Line, just as I'm singing his praises. It's a pretty big giant skeleton balloon push though on the right hand side so this might end up being a tower trade mother witch trying to stop it from happening but i don't think she's gonna work out so here you go big big give up on the tower on the left hand side and line does get the bomb tower minor down to make sure he picks that up good magic archer doesn't quite get geometry but there you go now gets the lineup so minor giant skeleton loon for line with the interesting Ice Wiz, Baby Dragon, NATO defensive combination. And Rad running Bridge Spam with Heal Spirit. And currently in the lead. Rad will be appearing in the last chance qualifier end of this or end of October. October 30th, 31st on the official Clash Royale Esports channels. He is ranked 49th in the CRL standing, so LCQ for him. Miner and Loon to the left-hand side for line right now. Although has to control these E-barbs here. Bandit dashes in. Bomb Tower picks up one E-barb, but not the second. Loon gets down on the left-hand side. Here we are in a sudden death of overtime. And, man, this King Tower getting shredded by Rad. And, man, line just so low. And the three crown down. Rad gets the geometry. Magic Archer. What an interesting bridge spam variation from from Rad. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Man, I the haircut has to come. Look at this. Look at this flip in my hair. It's terrible. It's terrible. You know what's not terrible though? Seeing all you guys here this morning, because I know it is early for me. Now we're at six thirty. Your regular updates on the time. Omega Gaming saying seven thirty in Florida. Well, I've heard of it. Um, I am Cat is from Atlantis, so um, you know, good luck with the not drowning since it's underwater by a significant margin. But uh, happy to have you here, Atlanteans. Atlant, Atlant, Atlantans would be Atl from people from Atlanta, so Atlanteans would be uh, people from Atlantis, I think. You know, I haven't met many of you. Would you pl like to see a card ban phase back for one v one? Um, this is an interesting question, one that I talk about a lot. I really like dual mode um, conceptually overall. I think there are some challenges because of the ability to abuse certain cards. Um, and I think that there there's potentials to tweak dual mode to make it, uh, to, to kind of balance it out a little bit. Um, one suggestion that's been made is to allow spells to be repeated, just not any other cards. And that's interesting because it does let you contend a bit more with certain cards that get abused a lot, like Flying Machine, for example. Um, but... Bans are an interesting one because they do take a full card fully off the table. I don't know if I think bans and dual mode together make sense. I think it's one or the other. 
Um, and it, the reality is now we're at 100, over 100 cards in Clash Royale that if you're going to do bans, you have to do more than one ban. A single ban doesn't really accomplish a ton um, in, in limiting deck variants and in, um, in helping you actually make your analysis. So um, I would say that if you're going to do bans, you have to do double bans of some sort. And that starts to get to be a lot. I experimented on this channel with a bunch of different ban ideas uh, in 2020. Uh, experimented with double bans, experimented with triple draft bans, where you actually, the players went back and forth drafting their bans, and limitations where you could only ban at most one spell, at most one building, things like that. Um, and it was interesting, it was compelling. Um, it's a, it's a, it's an, always an interesting question, though, of what's the best format for competitive. I think that dual mode has, a, has, has the ability I think currently it is the best format. I think there are some, some tweaks that can happen. Obviously, the debate over whether pre-submitted decks or not pre-submitted decks. Um, I think that, pre that not pre-submitted is better, competitively speaking. Um, but then it's the question of, uh, you know, how does how does a league want to be run? Um, so, yeah, it's a it's an interesting question. And the Hog Rider, the Royal Hogs going to the right-hand side. So, overall, I think dual mode is and can be better than bans. Um, just, we need to figure out a couple things here. We're still in the first year of dual mode being the norm for competitive. So we didn't see a ton of hog EQ yesterday. It was very limited in its play in the NACA region, North America, Central America region. And here we are seeing it in game number two from Rad. And notice NATO and Bomb Tower are both out. Great chance for a hog rider deck. So really good call here by Rad. Arban USA, Ar Ar um, Arbas and US saying it should be single use for units and twice use for spells. Interesting idea. You can't use a spell three times, but you can use it twice. That is interesting. It starts to get complex though, right? And so that becomes a hard question to answer about the complexity. Here we go. Magic Archer does get one lineup there for line. Oh, lineup for line. See what I did there? Nice. So pretty classic Hog EQ variation here for Rad. Surprised he didn't go Bomb Tower just with the prevalence of, uh, of Royal Hogs, but I guess he's thinking that between the Tesla, Ice Spirit, Valk, Log, and Firecracker, he can handle it. Of course, you see that negative one trade for line going to happen a lot of the time here when that Firecracker goes down behind the Princess Tower. And a great Tesla. Wow, what a great Tesla from Rad. Although now what does he do for the Royal Hogs, though? Firecracker comes out with Skeletons. And that Magic Archer just stays on the board here. So this is a tough one for Rad without Fireball, without Poison, without Lightning, without any targeting big spell. He can log an EQ, but... It's not quite that time yet. Pretty simple King Tower activation there, and don't think it'll affect the match too much. And does that hog turn into skeletons? There we go. Wonder what the kite was going to be for the. Mini P.E.K.K.A., no connection here for the Hog Rider. Don't expect many of those to get in here against Hunter, Log, and Mini P.E.K.K.A. But keep an eye on the way Rad cycles here on defense. As long as this game is close going to the Triple Elixir, it feels like it should be Rad's game. And a Hog hit gets in. That is not what... Line needed right now, but Royal Hogs touch too. 1161 to 961, 200 HP on the dot. Thanks for the easy math there, fellas. And here we go, final 75 seconds. And this should be some pretty simple work here for Rad. Don't get caught. Get EQs on tower. And don't give up something silly. And he does get a hog hit here with the log behind. Oh, my word. Magic Archer knows that Tesla's going there, but just can't do anything about it. Log to knock back. Will Skelly's finish this off? The EQ gets in. And here we go. Royal Hogs, but they will not beat out a Tesla. 
Magic Archer doesn't get Geometry. It does not touch. Valk to hold Fireball in. That's a good Fireball. It's a big-time Fireball. But right now, Line needs to stop this Hog Rider. This Hog Rider is everything, and it hits. GG, well played. Nice work there by Rad. Hey, Sandy, OP mod has to go, but thank you so much, Sandy. Always great having you here. And Mance Raider. So we got some, we got some classic Rich Slate and YouTube mods. Some of the best in the business, if you will. That was a nice 2-0 for Rad there. And one that Rad certainly needed today. This is the last day of group play in the APAC region. We are reaching the final days of group play between today and tomorrow. Today for APAC and the EMEA, the Europe, Middle East, Africa region. And then uh, tomorrow with the Latin American region and the NACA region. So both of those uh, in their final bits. Um, Big Rilla asking, any suggestions on the, on the double, uh, on the two, on the two X tournament tomorrow? Um, something that goes goes heavy. Something that I mean, I wouldn't go with anything cycle in the double elixir tournament. So there's that's that's my that's my take. Um, Sluggish Crow asking, hey Rich, how do commentators buy time for production during delayed matches? You talk about stuff. You got good stuff to talk about. Um, at CRL World Finals in 2018. We had a one-hour delay because of a League Ops issue um, involving uh, some translation challenges with it being in Japan and some of the non-Japanese-speaking teams. We had an hour-long delay to open up the show, which was really rough. And uh, Andrew and I, we had a CWA there with us as well, which was really, really a wonderful uh, gift for us. And the three of us cycled through and just talked about various things. Um, at one point, I even brought up my theory that there are slightly more left-handed players in the pro divisions of Clash Royale. Than, um, than, than there are normally, right? That, that much like in baseball uh, or in professional sports, lefties are overrepresented in Clash Royale. And uh, my anecdotal evidence, my, my small uh, local poll, did show that, that there was a bit more. That um, left-handed people made up about like 15 or 20% of the players in CRL at World Finals as opposed to the normal about 10%-ish. So uh, maybe it was like 5 to 10, whatever it was. It was about double normal representation, so... That did hold my theory a little bit. But, uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing you do. You have just whatever. You, got, you tell backstories. You, uh, you debate different ideas. You uh, you vamp, as the word is. What is um, League Ops? Oh, good question there. Um, League Ops is League Operations. That is the, um, the people who are actually running the competition portion of it. So the referees, the um, administrators. So there was a bit of an issue with miscommunication between referees and players due to language barriers. And ooh, cleanly done by KK. Great timing and placement there. And Jack certainly not happy about that one. And what? KK running, let me clean off my glasses here. Pump. And against Earthquake, that's going to be a um, it's going to be a tough one there. KK running pump, which between being taken out of starting hand and of course the uh, addition of Earthquake, unbelievable. Yeah, Harshith saying, pump. Wait, what? And that's the correct answer here. Against EQ is the rip. So interesting back and forth here between the NATO and the starting hand for KK against Hog Rider, and then the EQ against pump for Jack. Really strange choice going golem pump here from KK. I guess he was betting that we're not really in an earthquake heavy meta right now, but Jack goes hog EQ game number one. I am Levante saying, Rich, can you face reveal for 50k special? Um, what do you mean? My face is on stream all the time. My face is pretty revealed. KK Golem's up into the left hand lane here, not having done much damage so far. Jack going to, of course, pressure the right-hand side. Lumberjack will shut that down a little bit, but still, one shot gets in, 14-24 remaining. 
Skelly should be here to pull. And doesn't pull, instead sets up low and goes bomb tower. Gonna take two lumberjack shots, but mitigate most of that damage. Gotta wonder if KK is mostly using this to experiment now. At five and six, gonna be hard for him to get into. Would have to go two, I don't know how many matches, if he has two or three matches today. But might be using this matchup mostly for experimentation to prepare for world finals. Of course, that's just speculation on my end. And that is a ton of damage. Unbelievable. KK with the lead now. Gonna give up a hog shot. But just like that, KK gets back in it. And I will explain the standings next time they come on screen, guys, but we were just in the middle of a kind of compelling section of the gameplay. Nice ba nice bar barrel. What does KK do here? Does he have NATO back? And he does. Electro Dragon, the final card for KK. So fascinating Golem variant here as he starts getting pressure on. For KK, it's about having that law, that NATO back in cycle. The Electro Dragon slows down the Hog Rider. Nice. 495 to 560. Things getting dicey here for Jack. And of course, we are in triple against Golem, so that's no that's no easy task. He wants to cycle the EQs and he does. EQ and log both in. 314 remaining. Still more than one EQ log cycle away, though. Knight and delivery down. EQ down one more time. Log will not finish off. Has to get back around one more time here and do it before this damage gets on tower. Log to the right-hand side. Can Jack get to EQ in time? 68 HP, and he does. Perfect EQ cycle. Shuts it down. GG. Well played, Jack. Great work there at the end to get that done. Great work there at the end. Uh, Fuzzby Jess, ooh, with a tier one sub over on Twitch. Second time, two months in a row. Thank you. Thank you, Fuzzby. Uh, I think that's Sakina. Uh, bet that face reveal is a gooder joke. If not, should have been. Would have been funny. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the uh, the stunners. The stun glasses, if you will. Oh, without glasses. I mean, I, I'm without glasses on CRL all the time. But here on my streams, we stun up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We stun up here on uh, YouTube.com slash Rich Slayton. Um, let's see, how overcome the mid-ladder heavy meta? Um, well, I think you just saw it from uh, from Jack. So Hoggy Q ain't bad. Um, let's see. Okay, Asan, we get it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, guys. Um, the uh, <laughs> I'll let the mods handle the uh, the spamming. But, uh, guys, let's just not... Let's, let's, you know, maybe not spam your flags that much in chat. Maybe one one flag, right? Maybe two, three flags. You get three flags. Three flags you get. But 30 might be a bit too many too many flags. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure who's going to win 2021 CRL. The viewers are going to win that one because of how good a competition it's going to be. You know what I mean? Tune in. Clash Royale League 2021 World Championships in December. Um, and uh, let's see. Anybody going go to go to do predictions the next game? Oh, do we? Yeah, I don't know if we have anybody on the, um, the Twitch side as a mod at the moment. Um, and you know what? Let's go ahead and jump into our matchups, and um, let me see. I don't know if you want the responsibility, Chuck, but um, unfortunately for you, you now do have the responsibility of being a mod on Twitch. Been around for a long time, and there you go, Chuck. You're now modded on Twitch. Make predictions for the next one. So Jack goes from Hog EQ to Lava. Very, very interesting. And guards here for Jack. Guards with the recent buff. Certainly seeing a, uh, a resurgence after being kind of dead for a long time. Mostly seeing them in lava right now. So about explaining the leaderboard. Yes, Bossy Ozzy. When it comes back up again, I'll walk us through it. And the pigs come down here, and what is the response? Skeleton dragons, which, honestly, I'm curious about, I want to watch the amount of damage that comes in. 
Mm, probably about similar to Valk at this point. Man, Royal Hogs are just so strong right now, and Jack playing without a true Royal Hogs counter. Magic Archer getting some... Oh, does not get the Lumberjack here. The Lumberjack goes right around the Ma Magic Archer shots. And it's Lava Clone. I guess I should have seen that coming when I saw the uh, the bats and the and the lumberjack. Well, Magic Archer will be very nice in this matchup here for KK. And Jack just has no answer for these piggies, so he has to hope this big clone push gets it done. I didn't know anybody was running Lava Clone right now, but leave it to Jack to get something different in there. Cannot get the, flying, the, the Magic Archer off the board, though. And that Magic Archer just shutting down the Lava Clone pushes, so... This has been a unique matchup. Golem, <laughs> Golem Pump for KK in game number one. Lava Clone for Jack in game number two. And we are kind of all over the place. But that's what you expect. And I didn't see the standings come up there at all, so I'll, I'll make sure I get them in the, in ga in the next game. I get, so, I get so down on the game sometimes that I forgot to uh, talk about the standings. But you know what? Don't you worry, guys. We'll get them there. Um, and speaking of getting there, if you haven't gotten there yet, uh, make sure that you get to the subscribe button down below if you're watching right now. Uh, this is one of the most fun places for Clash Royale Esports. A great place for you to come and see events like the Queso Cup, the Bren Chong Cup, all the cups. If there's a cup happening, it's happening here, of course, also when we do the CRL monthly qualifiers, the uh, the before the, the end of the qualifier, but the top 32, the earlier stages. I have all of those here as well. Not to mention some cool breakdowns and uh, technique type videos to help you maybe tune up because CRL and all these events are open to everybody. Some easier than others to qualify for. Uh, but CRL's top 1,000 ladder. Some of these tournaments, these cups, have open qualifiers for a number of their spots. And so you could tune up and be here next time. And so there's some videos on my channel as well to help you learn certain skills and develop in certain parts of your game. So if you want to play competitive, you have the tools to do so. So all that right here on this channel. Hit subscribe and make sure you're back. And of course, the bell, all those different things, et cetera, et cetera, yada, 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 yada. And of course, we will be back. Um, we're here for a while here this morning, but also... Um, this weekend, it's going to be the, the, the regional finals, and I'm doing both the European region and the Latin American region right around uh, 12.30 and 1.30 p.m., respectively, uh, and that's central time, so I'll give you that. The other times will be up soon, but I'll be doing both of those playoffs this weekend as well, so if you subscribe, then you'll know to come back here for Saturday and Sunday, which will be, um, which is tomorrow. No, today's Thursday, which will be two days from now. There you go. I should know what days of the week are. Um, let's see. Um, Sakina is Fubsy as opposed to Fuzzby. Just an FYI. Um, wait, do I, have, I've been saying Fuzzby this whole time instead of Fubsy. <laughs> um, good, good correction there by Mance. I've been saying Fuzzby this whole time, but it's Fubsy. I don't know why. It just feels like Fuzzby is the correct thing, but yes, it's Fubsy. Oh, Sakina Fubsy. I've been saying it wrong for, I don't know, a year at least. Nice work. Hey, um, I would say that you just subscribe to the guy with this with this ridiculous name, um, but you know, person with the very long um, name, why I'm not putting your comment on, on screen, but thanks for the subscription on, on, on YouTube. Really do appreciate that. Let's go ahead, jump into our game number three here of KK and Jack. Miner to the outside. Mega Minion in response. Maybe Poison for KK. Oh, no, it's going to be Minor Loon here for KK. So, no Poison, I believe. We'll see if he's running Arrows. Valk comes in late against the Graveyard. Oh, and the Bats go right into a Mother Witch. KK can't be happy about that one. Opportune timing there for Jack, and 
Wow. Absolutely, this is Shred City. Jack here just exploiting that moment against KK. And KK has no fireball. He already ran it in game number two, so smart call to go Mother Witch in game three, and Jack just completely outmatches him. Completely outmatches him. And keep calm, stay me with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, keep calm. That's amazing. First time subscribing? Well, welcome to the Twitch channel, brother. And welcome to um, a, a harsh loss here, KK. Jack outplayed the interesting matchup in game number one. Very close finish. Game number two, it was a, a nice shutdown performance by KK. But then game number three... Oh, 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 no. Things go from bad to worse for KK here. Who here, um... Who here's ever played a mortar and had a P.E.K.K.A. land right on top of it? This is real rough. But great call from Jack. Jack got a good read on this one. Fireball gets played in game two. And he goes, oh, you played your fireball, did you? Let me throw Mother Witch into this graveyard deck. KK trying his best to cycle his way through into this one again, but just so much ground he made up. Goes minor. And, oh, boy, pick up there. Nicely done by Jack. That's going to be it. GG. GG here. And the uh, the good game from KK, same from Jack, and yeah. You know, you gotta imagine that KK is uh, experimenting a bit with um, CRO World Finals a fair ways away here in December. And that's, you know, not, not really in a great position to qualify for this event, or for the next stage of this event, plus having World Finals in December well, you see a lot of players, KK himself, experimenting a little bit. You got to chalk some of that up there, but Jack does a good job of taking advantage of that experimentation and firing right back. So let me go ahead and find out what our next matchup is going to be. Um, hard one to watch, though. Who even plays Pekka with Mortar, says Pranav. Well, Jack did. So there you go. Um, Jack got it done. What is the best Hoggy Q um, variation in your opinion? Um, my opinions are all colored by dual mode, so it's hard for me to say like what the best variation is. Um, do you think Night Witch is dead or even Golem Night Witch? Um, Night Witch, Golem Night Witch is dead. Um, Night Witch is alive in Graveyard right now. Um, Rad versus Jupiter is next for people on Twitch. If anyone's doing, um, if anyone's doing predictions on Twitch. And let's see. I don't know if anyone is. Hey, it's Brittany is in the house. Hello, it's Brittany. Mwah. How are you? Um, yeah, Rad vs. Jupiter is next. Rich, uh, let's see. What games are you playing? Well, I play this one quite a bit. play a lot of Apex. Um, those are my two mains. Um, your number is your list. Um, what's the, it's like, where's, where does Igor rank on my list? Well, right now, I don't even know if I put him top. I mean, I guess, he's, I, guess I put him top 20. He's not top 10 on my list right now, though. Um, Igor's top 20, but purely based off of his ladder play, he's not playing well and competitive. Hasn't he's like I think Igor is um, Igor needs a coach with a firm hand for competitive, um, and that's just not the case for him. So Igor is still a you know top tier world world level ladder player, um, but not so much in competitive these days. LCQ. Um, Akash Singh asking, where will the LCQ be broadcast? The last chance qualifier, that's the LCQ, um, which is where the number 25 through 56 ranked players in CRL make their last gasp attempt to qualify for World Finals. That will be October 30th and 31st on the official Clash Royale esports page. I don't know if they're here, but if they are, they can go ahead and link their own channel because uh, I don't have the link ready right now. Um, the description should be in my show notes, by the way, the link. You can probably get that one there as well. Um, let's see. Wait, what did they do to Night Witch? Um, oof, War Llama. You might want to go open your app, dude. Or, um, 
you know, read the, the balance updates because <sighs> Night Witch um, took a beat. Took a beating, let's put it that way. Bomb Tower or Tesla? Right now, Bomb Tower because of Piggies. Um, I prefer Tesla, but right now, Bomb Tower. I prefer Tesla because of the ability to dodge things, like EQs in particular. Um, but Bomb Tower is better right now. Let's see. Who's the best player according to you? Um, I mean, of all time, of right now. Um, that's always different questions. Um, Bossy Ozzy. Hey, I was going to cut out. It was a pleasure being here, Rich. I'll check out your channel later. Have a great rest of the stream. Oh, thank you. Mad respect. Thanks for stopping by. Do appreciate it. And to answer the question, who's the best player according to me? Um, you know, I, that's probably too hard for me to pick. Uh, I mean, like, Moe's the easy choice to make right now. Um, but we'll see if Moe and Lucas are both as good in this meta as they were in previous metas. So that's going to be an interesting question that we'll see uh, in the future. Let's go ahead and jump into our next matchup, Rad versus Jupiter King. And um, Tristan's saying, no, Rich, EQ, it's hidden Tesla. No, what I mean is you can dodge by placing the Tesla high. You can still pull uh, by placing the Tesla outside of the EQ to the... Uh, what I mean is, uh, from the you can, it's harder, you can make it so you cannot hit both tower and EQ. Sakina so Fubzy. I hate the relationship Tesla and Royal Ghost have. By the way, funny story there about your name. I think it's pretty far back in the uh, in the chat there. There you go. This was the story of the of the Fubzy name. And Juice World heading to school. Can go go study hard, Juice World. So game number one here. And keeping an eye on the uh, CRL World Finals watch, Jupiter King. In the last chance qualifiers. Ranked 42nd, so Rad and Jupiter, of course, both in that mix for the LCQ, but it is the LCQ, right? It's not the Q. You didn't qualify. It's your last chance to qualify. So uh, going to be a tough outing for both of those guys. Rad's group is bracket B, where the way that the last chance qualifier is built for CRL is each player will have to play through a four-person bracket. You win twice, you're in. You lose once, you're out. Schwarzen, Benzer, Betfus, and Rad all in their group. Jupiter King has a very tough group as well, with Cody Go, Faust, Kazutune, and of course Jupiter. Faust might be the, the real tough one there, but Cody Go, don't count him out there either. David Brown asking what my favorite card is. Right now, it's it's always been Ice Golem, but Magic Archer is probably my number one right now. Love me some Magic Archer. Electro Giant deep in there right now, and the Lightning to clear off the rest of that one. Rad with the pig split, cage not available, Dark Prince and Bomber splitting lanes here to work on that defense. My favorite spell, McGaming Person, is NATO. It just does so many cool things. It's also maybe the most important, like, impactful spell in the game. Very few, very few cards have impacted the game to the level that NATO has. E-Giant not getting that far, and I saw someone did have a question. What's a good defense for Electro Giant? Says Munch on YouTube. I saw a couple questions about it. Well, uh, you know, it's one of those things where people always ask what's a good defense. Well, it depends on your deck, obviously. Getting some solid DPS on it, some good single target damage. Swarm Troops obviously get shredded by Electro Giant. Being able to control it and DPS it. And so far, Rad doing an okay job of those two. The Lightning causing some trouble. Notice the flying machine far away now. 
and this will defend the Electro Giant fine. And he really wants that Brawler in front of the Flying Machine, and he gets it. And a 3-3 split here. Does the Flying Machine turn back to the Electro Giant? That's the big question here. And it goes to the Bomber, to the Cage, but not to the E-Giant. This is going to be interesting. Cage to pull here. 25 seconds left. 11.21 to 15.56. Electro Giant's going to get away from here. How much tower damage does it actually get, though? Flying Machine gets on tower. Flying Machine gets on tower. Oh, my word. What a brutal mistake here. What a brutal little bit to slide through. Lightning gets on tower. Fireball needs to come in here for Rad. Will he have enough? And he does. Does the NATO come in from Jupiter King? And it doesn't. NATO comes in on defense, not on offense. On defense, not on offense. And by 24 HP, Rad takes the win. Oh, wow. So you wanted to see how to beat Electro Giant? There you go. You just saw it. What a finish. 24 HP. Man, that NATO, I mean, you, you, you kind of feel there for, for Jupiter King, but he needed to make, be able to make that uh, adjustment and get the NATO on offensive rather than defensive. <sighs> that was absolutely rough. That was absolutely rough there. Oh, you know what? We have no music. Here we go. Um, <laughs> watching a royal ghost pass a Tesla is what Cupid feels like watching a junior high school dance. Oh, boy, I never heard the Cupid Junior High dance. That's hilarious. Um, thoughts on Mini P.E.K.K.A.? Um, he is small and likes pancakes. Those are my thoughts on Mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, that was a brutal one. Mick, Mr. Gaming Person, I need help getting out of Arena 12. Uh, win more games would be my advice there. Um, uh, this guy who has the name I'm not putting on YouTube in the YouTube chat. I can't respond to you because your name is ridiculous. Um, I'm even going to write right at you. Your name, dude. Your name. I'll put that in the chat, but I'm not going to throw you up on screen here. Um, so sorry if you unsubscribe, but maybe don't have that be your name, dude. <laughs> that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, let's see. Franz Consane, use the pink glasses. Um, the pink glasses, I lent them out to a friend to wear for an event. Um, so, you know, uh, unfortunately... Uh, the pink glasses are not in the collection today. I have to get, I have to either get them back from him, fingers crossed if I ever actually do, or get new ones, which I've had two pairs of those already. So yeah, I'll probably get the, get some new ones eventually soon. Um, let's see. That's so rough, but if he had a defensive NATO, the pigs would have got the tower. You know, I mean, I think they would have, but I don't really know for sure. Um, um, it's my brother's account. My name is Aussie Dog. I told you, said that guy. Um, what? I don't, dude. I'm just reading. I'm reading two chats. Um, you know, I don't see Aussie Dog anywhere in the... Oh, there's Aussie Dog. Now it's proper name. There you go. There you go. There's your proper name. I'll respond to you on that one, but I have uh, I have two chats and gameplay and a bunch that going on, man. So to anybody, if I don't get to your comment, if I miss you a bunch of times, whatever it is, I'm managing Twitch, YouTube, gameplay, a bunch of stuff going on. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Let's see. Um, Sakina Fubzy. I thought of the most awesome jokes. How did Mini P.E.K.K.A. lose enough weight to be a Mini, uh, mini P.E.K.K.A.? Man shakes. Like pancakes? Man shake. I see what you're um, Let's see. But I can't change your... I cannot change your name on the clip. So there you go. I can't change your name on what comes up here. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not going to answer that question. Man, you guys are just a asking questions that I like... Why are you guys trying to put, put my... <laughs> put my chat into some ridiculous spots. Um, how would you react to someone who uses the Witch in eSports? We've seen it. It's rare, but we've seen it. Um, let's see. Can't you... <laughs> Maro, which great name, by the way, Maro. Oh my god, Rich, can't you do everything all the time at the time at 6 a.m.? Well, it's 7 a.m. now. I have no excuses anymore, Maro. Uh, Maro also... Yes, I am streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, guys, for those of you watching. Um, Maro is the name of one of my favorite all-time uh, mixed martial arts commentators, Marlo commentators Marlo Marlo Ronaldo, um, longtime MMA and now um, pro wrestling commentator. And well, good morning, kiddo. Um, <laughs> hold on, we're gonna have a, a little guest on my lap here, guys, and I'm, I'm gonna have to take a break after this game to go and and uh, I'll be back. I'm gonna go take him, but for now we're gonna we're gonna cast this game. 
And then in between games, I'm going to go ahead and um, take young Slayton here. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Oh, you're showing me Trog and Bracken? No, this is Dangly. Oh, that's Dangly. Oh, you have Trog and Dangly this morning. Okay. So Slayton Jr. in my lap for this game, guys. So I'm going to cast the game so that he can understand it as well. And then I'm going to go take him to uh, go get his mother to wake up. And um, uh, there we go. The next match. Let me go ahead and ask what the next match is going to be. Um, did the standings come up yet? My son came in and woke up. He woke up. Good morning, buddy. How are you? You woke up because... Aha. Well, so, Jack, those are called the Royal Hogs. Those piggies on the left-hand side, they go and attack that side. No Lumberjack there. I mis misspoke there. And the that's a that's called the Lava Hound. So the big Lava Hound, he's like a dog made of, of fiery rocks. He goes over to that tower. And Rad, who's this player down here, he's playing um a big old heavy deck. Ooh, with a miner. The miner goes under and goes to the back of the tower. And the poison, though... Doesn't quite, ooh, never mind. Gives the lead here to Rad. So look at those numbers. Up top, 1429. Up bottom, 1622. So that means that right now, he's winning. Rad is beating that guy, Jupiter King, up there. Do you understand? Yeah. You do? Oh, well, you're a smart kiddo. All right. Piggy split at the bridge. Look, the hogs go, they're wearing helmets. You see that? Those hogs wearing helmets. That one goes to that side, and they're eating the tower. Should you eat a building? You should. That seems like a terrible idea to eat a building. It's full of rocks and stuff. Zappy's split two to the right, and it's the Electro Dragon. See that blue dragon? He's full of electricity, like the light bulbs. But it's a different kind of... You probably shouldn't... You shouldn't touch light bulbs or Electro Dragons. But he's full of electricity. He's making everyone go zap, 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 zap. And there you go. There's the Lumberjack. Fireball in on the left-hand side. And that's going to be to, to, to tower down. Buddy, it looks like they're going to be all tied up here. So Jupiter King Rad won the first game. And Jupiter won the second. And now they're going to go to game number three. And uh, guys, I'm not going to show the kiddo on stream. I'm going to go ahead and um, walk him over to, to his mom, and I'll be back in a couple of moments. Um, so go ahead and uh, sorry it's going to be just on this screen here for a couple of minutes. Um, I'll be back here. In a, uh, I'll be back here. Um, game number three coming in a second, but I'm going to go take care of the kiddo for a couple. So everyone, behave yourselves. I'm going to go. I'll put some music on for you. Um, and behave yourselves. Oh, no, there's no music? Ah, no music. Um, hmm. Well, this will be this screen silently for just a minute here, folks. And I'll be back uh, in a second here once I get the kiddo all situated. All right, buddy, let's go. Let's go find Mama. Come on. Um, you'll go wake her up? Oh, let me help you help you first. All right, guys, be back in a second.
We're back, we're back. Hello, hello. Sorry for the delay there, everybody. But... Oh, back just in time for the game. Back just in time for the game, folks. So here we go. Hey, sorry for the delay, guys, but being a dad comes first. And the kiddo was awake, needed to be taken to his mom. So here we go. And I made it back just in time for game number three, so that's nice. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any problems with uh, you know, me being a dad first, I don't know, maybe you needed a better dad, I don't know. But right now we're having a great game between Jupiter and Rad. And I think this is the first RG of the day. So RG Fish Boy here. Wondering what the spell situation is for Jupiter because Lightning and Fireball both out, the two more go to's for RG on his side. Probably Lightning for Rad. John Kennedy, I was just getting my own kid since he woke up. I get it. Thank you, John. If you're not a dad, it's hard to understand. And Jupiter just smashes the left hand tower. Heal Spirit does not go with the Royal Giant. It will not be Fireball either direction. Both of them already used it. As you can see on the right-hand side, Fireball used Game 1 by Rad and used Game 2 by Jupiter King. Solid lightning here for Rad and double RG push. Final 30 seconds left. Fisherman gonna get the pig, not the first Royal Giant. Goes for the second Royal Giant, but does not get it. And that's absolutely huge. Does a shot get in? No, one more shot doesn't get in. And looks like Jupiter gonna hold on here. Rad's gonna try to RG again. Skellies, do they stop the pull? One RG shot, gonna get in, I think. Does the lightning get there in time? And it's not gonna do enough. GG, well played. Jupiter King holds on for a solid win here. And there you have it. Jupiter taking the dub. GG, well played. I don't know if we saw the final card there from Jupiter. Already had used Lightning, already had used Fireball. And our schedule for the day. I guess that um, Chuck hasn't figured out his, uh, hasn't figured out the predictions yet on Twitch. Or maybe you're watching on mobile. That's a possibility as well. Um, but next up is Igor versus Hajime. So I know a lot of you excited to see Igor play. Well, he's coming up here in just a moment. Alexander Milosevic saying, do you play any Supercell games other than Clash? I used to play Clash of Clans back in the day, not so much anymore. Um, I played with I played Brawl Stars for a while, um, but I, you know, I never. Part, I'll, I'll be uh, two things. One, like CR takes up so much of my time, and two, I never unlocked a legendary after playing for a long time. I never unlocked any of the legendary brawlers. I was just like, I, I just wanted a legendary so bad, and I got frustrated. Uh, but no, mostly I uh, pretty much stick to CR. I've played the other the others um, in, in fits and spurts, but come on, Clash Royale, Clash Royale's the Clash Royale's my uh, my mobile gaming love of my life. Come on, come on, kiddos. Um, sorry, Rich says Chuck, dude, I'm just messing with you. Um, but if you can figure it out, that's cool. And if you can't, that's cool too. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Hajime versus Igor. And so here we go. Let me explain the standings finally, the color coding. One, two, and three is gold, silver, and bronze. They qualify for the playoffs and I believe get a portion of the, of the prize pool. 
fourth, fifth, and sixth in the green. That means they qualify for the regional playoffs. So top six from this group stage will qualify for the regional finals, which you see on the top right is next up. That'll be this weekend. Seven through 12, they do not qualify, but they remain in Division One for the next season of Queso Cup, which I believe will be most likely in the spring at some point. Um, maybe in the early spring, we'll see. And then um, 13th and 14th, the bright red is automatically relegated to Division Two. And the soft red, 13th position, has to play against the top two players of Division Two for a spot to stay in Division One. So long story boring. One through six qualifies for regional finals. Seven through 12 does not qualify, but stays in Division One for next season. 13 is risking relegation, and 14 is automatically relegated. That's what those color codings mean. Hajime plays Mortar. Easy connection here. Flying Machine will take it down, but not before a ton of damage in. Lava Hound left lane. I wonder if Igor's playing guards. Mance Raider said I started on Boom Beach and got to CR versus the, via the Nick and Knight YouTube channel. Nick's a good dude. Met him at World Finals in 2019. I played some Boom Beach as well. But come on. It's CR, CR is... Oh, and the guards come down late and in front of Tower. I wonder if Igor's having connection issues because that was a really weird set of guards. Lava's up left-hand lane. I've said this many times, and I'll keep on saying it, that in my opinion, and I think I'm pretty right here, Clash Royale is the best designed game that specifically is mobile, right? If they're talking about games that take advantage of how mobile works, the touchscreen interface, all that stuff, there is no game that is better designed for mobile specifically. Lava Hound in, Miner to the back, defensive Miner to pick up, the damage here. Way to stay focused for Igor. Knowing that right hand tower was done and just let me see if I can build up that left hand side. And right now build up he has. Two Lava Hounds down. Two Mega Minions down. Fly Machine on the Mortar here. And things looking real rough for Hajime. Mortar Miner in a cross tower game against Lava Hound. And that's going to be a GG here. Very nicely played by Igor. Very nicely played by Igor. So staying alive, remember, remember Igor is not going to qualify for the group stage, but currently see him in 13th place. He certainly wants to try to qualify to get out of the relegation danger. So we'll see if he is able to do that here. We'll see what actually happens. Oh, hold on one second, folks. One second, folks. Oh, I clicked away from that. Darn it. There we go. Um, oh, here's some music. Producing your own stream with this many moving parts can be um, can be unique. The only thing I play other than CR is chess. Is, is why can't I get this to work? There we go. Only thing I play other than CR is chess, mobile PC console, whatever. It's all I play anymore. Yeah, I uh, I've played some chess. I have a chess.com membership. Um, I'm not great. I like to play all the fast the fast versions. Um, and let's see. Um, what was the next? There was, I think I thought I think I saw a geography question somewhere in there. Um, let's see, Alexander Milosevic saying, no, I'm not a gaming coach, I, don't know. I wonder if you know where Serbia is. Yeah, Eastern Europe. Um, like, next to Romania, right? But Eastern Europe. That one's not too difficult, as far as the geography questions go on my channel. Let's see, um, I missed the early part of the stream, how many more matches do we have? I don't know the exact number of matches we have remaining, but, you know, we've got some time, it's only about halfway through the stream, I would say right now, so plenty more to go. Um, have you tried Pokemon Unite? Uh, I have not tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Um, Oz saying, all Supercell games are amazing. Very cool. I'm a big Supercell gaming fan. That's part of why I'm here. Started with a lot of uh, Clash of Clans. I was in a, I had a clan with a bunch of my friends called Don't Eat Babies. Um, <laughs> the most ridiculous name ever. Um, the rules were um, participate in clan wars, um, donate 
uh, don't eat babies, and rule three is negotiable. Those were the rules for our clan. It was fun times, folks. Here we go. Game number two. Igor with match point here against Hajime. What's the format for the group stage? It is round robin, player 19375. Mikey Stash asking if I'm running predictions. No, I am not. Um, and predictions, uh, Chuck was going to try to figure it out. Or I just, Chuck did not agree to figure it out over on Twitch. I just told him he would. And then it's hard to figure them out. Do you know who's going to stream APAC Regional Finals in English as KFP? That should be Cashman. Um, Cashman is doing English and North America, North Central America, and I am doing Europe and Latin America. Serbia is southwest to Romania, says um, Vase Vlad. There you go. Ram Rider for Hajime. Igor coming out with E Giant. Thoughts on E Giant after the nerf? Well, um, thought number one is this matchup is brutal. People asking us about, um, about E Giant. And, um, well, here you go. How do you beat it? Having Pekka doesn't hurt. David Brown asking, what's my least favorite card? Barb Hut. It's not even the hardest to play against. It's just I don't like it conceptually. I don't like what Barb Hut... When Barb Hut is strong, I don't like what it does to the game. Caden Eitz saying I'm way better than them. Well, Caden, guess what? Uh, if that were the case, then I would be casting your matches for the Clash Royale League World Finals in December. But since I'm not, the empirical evidence is that either one of two things is true. Either one, you are not way better than them, or two, um, that you just didn't try this year. And I get it. Maybe you just didn't try, dude. That's possible. But um, my guess is if you were way better than these people, that uh, because there's you know $1.6 million on the line this year, that I would have heard your name before. E-Giant going to get murdered. Murdered by this P.E.K.K.A. Want to see a dead E-Giant? There you go. I, I... I don't understand running an E-Giant competitively right now. I really don't. Um, seen a lot of... Have not seen much success with the E-Giant since the 4% HP nerf. Last CR with a comment I can agree with. I believe that um, the CR should be the face of mobile gaming. Perfect design for mobile and takes skill. Yep. I agree. CR is currently in the top 15 free to, um, free to download games in the iTunes App Store. So Igor prolonging the inevitable here in game number two. Could he overwhelm in game three? Yes, he could. But between the with the single target DPS, especially the Pekka, it just feels unlikely. We need to see a pretty major mistake out of Hajime, in my opinion, for this to turn. And of course, Hajime extends his lead with that connection on the left-hand side, Mother Witch on the right-hand side as well. Poison slows down the movement speed, but not the attack speed of Pekka. And this is a nice little NATO play. Prince does get picked up by the Royal Ghost, though. And Igor trying to pull out all the tricks, even with that Prince connection, just not able to make it happen. Mama Pekka almost swings in the left-hand lane, doesn't quite do it. Igor is maybe, probably, the greatest ladder player of all time. And, of course, has one of the single greatest moments. And you talk about great moments in Clash Royale competitive history. The only reason why Igor's 3-0 in his CRL debut at World Finals and King of the Hill isn't, isn't the best one of 2019 is because of the Morton Surgical Goblin 1 HP game. But, all that being said, Igor is certainly... Certainly someone who I think needs a good, strong coaching hand to guide him in competitive. GG well played, all tied up. Game number three coming.
Let's see. Um, let me catch up on the chat here. It's been a while. Um, uh, e Giant is conceptually broken. You basically have 100, 0, 0, 100 matchups every time. Um, I don't even, yeah, I mean, I, th I don't even know if you have that anymore. Um, favorite deck of all time. Ah. It's a hard question. I like anything with minor NATO, with Magic Archer NATO, though. Nobody using Night Witch. Um, in Graveyard, yes, Dark Phoenix, but not in Golem or Beatdown anymore. Um, when you have to play E-Giant to counter a Ram Rider, the game is already over, says Mance Raider. And that's accurate. And that's super accurate. Um, let's see. Uh, Rich, not only is that clan name ridiculous, it's also really bad advice. Hmm. Sakina so Fubsy. Fub I have to I have to change years of saying so much time of saying it the wrong way. Sakina so Fubsy. I think I agree. Um, nobody in Queso Cup Brawl Stars is doing an English stream. Um, okay, that's interesting. I don't know anything about that. Is there an emote for watching Jared Bell? No, you just get you, you get you get great Clash Royale and you get me. That's what happens. Um, you know, different era. Um, you play Clash of Clans. I did quite a bit. Um. Who do you think have better chances of winning CRL Worlds? Oh, man. It's, gonna be, it's, it's so hard to tell. We're still so early in this meta. Um, obviously, you know, with the, the, the power of um, Team Mojules, it's going to be hard to overcome. But, you know, that's, that, it's, such, it's such a big tournament. You know, trying to pick anybody right now is really hard. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of people saying a lot, a lot of Oyasu fans here. Um, I just put up a great match between Oyasu and Elsiop on the channel. So if you do want to see some Oyasu gameplay, really fun matchup between Oyasu and Elsiop, uh, just go ahead and, you know, click around. You can subscribe. That's also a cool thing to do. But you can click around. You can find that find that matchup somewhere. Um, speaking of things that you can do with your with your clickiness and things like that, um, you can... Oh, come on. Button work. There you go. You can use code RICH in the Supercell shop. We're talking about all Supercell games, right? We're talking about Clash of Clans, talking about Brawl Stars, talking about Clash Royale, whatever it might be. Use code RICH when you buy stuff from the shop, and that helps out me. That's right, me. Um, and if you don't use my code, use someone's code. Just don't forget to use use a code, people. It's right there, and it's so helpful. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. Game number three, Hajime and Igor. Um, let's see. Igor is very talented to Andy Wang, but really needs a proper, more long-term training. Ben, I'm great on him, but it's been a while. Yeah, I mean, Igor, it's not even about training. It's about, like, decision-making, right? Um, there's, I think it was No Tilt World Championship in one of the qualifier rounds in a best of five. Igor ran the same deck four times in a row. And I think he was trying to make a point, trying to, like, maybe stunt for, um, you know, show off or whatever it is. But it wasn't a good choice to make. And I think that was a, a big example of, you know, Igor, again, is a brilliant player. One of the best, I mean, the, like I said, the best ladder player of all time and has some great performances. But that moment in No Tilt World Championship was a good example of um, why some coaching would be, does him wonders. And just... Hajime didn't have a great choice there, so... Had to go mini P.E.K.K.A. on the E-Wiz and then pick up the Mega Knight on the back end. But M.K. out of cycle and Snowball to the right. Hunter's going to work against these piggies, but not before giving up a ton of damage. And to answer the online offline question for CRO World Finals, I don't have all the information yet. As soon as I, as soon as the information is out there, it'll be out there. Dark Phoenix saying Igor not playing Mortar. Yeah. Well, in dual mode, doesn't play it as much. Eric Tran asking me, what's the hardest deck to master? And um, I don't really know. I don't have an opinion on that one. Poison hits to the right-hand lane. As the lead goes back to Igor ever so briefly, Hajime fires back with a fireball and takes over 927 to 822. 
you know, all this talk about Igor and whether where he is competitively speaking, keep in mind Igor is 13th overall on the CRL standings. Not super based off of his competitive performance, though. Based primarily off of his ladder performance. But he has, has earned a bit this year. Hajime on the other side is top 36, which puts him into the LCQ. Hajime will be playing in October in bracket D with the bridge spam master Wiro Yuya, who we've seen today, and Igor's long-term training partner and friend, former Immortals and Space Station gaming player Lapakati. So that'll be group D in the LCQ. Hajime, Wero, Yuya, and Lapo. That's a killer group. That is a brutal, brutal group to be in. Andy Patil asking about the deck I'm currently rocking. I'm currently playing Minor Wall Breakers, Magic Archer, NATO. Although I, you know, I'm flirting with the idea of going back to Skill Drill. Igor gets GUI down. I don't think he snowballs or... Oh, he does poison here. Oh, and there you go. The E-Wiz connects. GG, well played. Igor! And we'll see the st how, when the standings update if that's enough to get him back in the mix here. Because, man, he is definitely trying to avoid that relegation. But a nice win here for Igor. And uh, Pro Clown, I've, I, I've, I'm have i going to keep on... I, I don't want to ignore comments. Um, who's currently the best CR player according to your perspective? It's that's such a hard, it's such an impossible question to answer. Um, you know, it's it depends on meta. We're still kind of new in this in this third quarter, this fourth quarter meta, so it's hard to use that as an evaluative tool. Mo's having the best year so far. Will it continue through to the end of the year? We'll see. The but you look at the you look at the top players overall in CR right now. I'm gonna read the the top ten players. You know, what? I'm gonna read the top. Let's see how far I go. Man, if you just look, it goes, it goes sooty. Look at how deep it goes. I'm going to start at the top of CRL rankings right now and read down, right? First, Mohamed Light. Second, Lucas. Third, Sandbox. Fourth, Viper. Fifth, Samuel Basoto. Sixth is Ruben. Seventh is Anaban. Eighth, Anaban. Eighth is Morton. Higher comes in at nine. Pandora at 10. Moogie at 11. KK at 12. Igor at 13, right? So you look at that top 13 and how brutally good that one is. Right? That's, that's such an insane... And you keep, you keep going down. Air Surfer is number 15. Um, Line is number 18. Greco is number 20. But you look at that, like, top... Let's call it 13 to 15 players. And it is such an insane level of skill at that top. And you so asking, is it really early for me? Yes, it is. It is 7.40 now. So here, look at the standings. Igor has jumped out of that relegation spot, at least for the moment, at 4-7. and seven. Another win here would help him secure, I believe, his way out of that relegation space. KK right now. I wonder, I don't think, I think the total matches is 14. So we'll see if KK um, can get in this one. I I want I don't know if he can get to seven and seven and if seven and seven would be enough to move on. Let me go ahead. I'm gonna adjust here for a moment. Oh, that's gonna fall. Ooh, you know what? Actually, we might switch to these bad boys here. When you that moment when you stand up. And you realize there's a really great pair of gooders on your table. Is Wallace top 20? Wallace is 19th to answer Dark Phoenix's, Phoenix's question. And uh, all of the Clash... You know, I'll go ahead and link these in the chat right now. All of the Clash Royale... Um, all of the rankings you can find right here on Royale API. Um... Uh, Let's see. 
Yeah, I'm going to do these bad boys. All right. Switched. And it's going to... I'm, I'm looking good. Here we go. Royal Ho or Hog Rider in for KK. Hunter back in the game. OP Leo asking, where's Vulcan? Vulcan retired after 2019. Vulcan has moved on to university. Here's a good question from Blast CR. Do you think 100-0 matchups should exist? Um, I mean, in theory, no. But the problem is, with so many cards, it's impossible to avoid 100-0s at the skill level. Right? Players are so good now. The skill, the, the skill curve has has shifted so heavily that with the number of cards and the level of skill, it's impossible not to have what should be 100-0 matchups. I don't think 100-0 matchups exist for everybody. Um, if you're at 6K, there's a lot of matchups that are 100-0 for pros at this level that are not 100-0 for you at 6K. That, that, and that's, a, that's the factor about it, is like 100-0 depends on who you're playing against. Hog into the left-hand side, EQ working, E-barbs, stop him. And that Hunter just obliterates the flying machine, 1654 to 1388. KK with the lead here in game number one. And up against double spawners with Hog EQ. You have to imagine that KK should have a pretty good chance of holding on here. Bomb Tower to defend against the spawners and the Earthquake to work on one of them. Igor switching lanes as he should be. Doesn't want to give up more free EQ damage. I'm a bit surprised by Igor going with this deck in this situation and two hog hits in. That's GG. Pro Clown asking for my PB 6606. Two cannon cards down. Igor trying to stack here. And this stack might work. This stack might work. Fly Machine gets on tower. Unbelievable. Fly Machine on tower. Pig's getting through. The stack is crazy at the bridge. KK not running anything for air, really. The Hunter, but that's it. Oh, my word. The Overwhelm for Igor pulls it out. I cannot believe how much that flipped. I cannot believe how much that flipped. Unbelievable. What in the world? That turned on a dime real fast there. And um, man. Man, that was all that was all that was all KK. And then Igor just stack, 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 stack. And the big issue there at the end was that KK had no spell for the air, no delivery in that one. No snowball, no fireball, nothing to deal with the air troops. So he had to get a hunter or archers on it. But once they stacked like that. You can't play them anymore. You can't put them in there, and the fly machines were just ruining him. So, ooh boy, ooh boy indeed. Uh, Cassius, how many glasses do you have? I don't know, 20, 30 pairs, something like that. The power of double buildings. Ugh, I, I don't like it. I'm so conceptually. If we talk about, you know, people ask about my, my least favorite card, and I said it's the it's the the um, barb hut earlier. I conceptually don't like spawners overall. I don't mind having furnace in the game. Um, and Pranav with a, with a great idea, with, with, the same, with, with my idea. Do you think that spawners are a fundamentally broken concept in a fast-paced game like CR, or can the spawn, concept of spawners ever be met without annoyance? And I think that I'm with the first. I think that spawners, I personally don't think spawners are good for the game. Um, I don't mind Furnace, but Barb Hut and um, Goblin Hut, um, those are the two spawners that I think are, are actually, they're both bad. It's bad for the game when they're good. That's my opinion on those two cards. So here we go. Game number two. Igor with the advantage. And yes, double spawners are all over mid ladder, as um, Hugo pointed out. Because there's not many choices to be made there. Just put your spawners down. So as far as skill cap for playing, 
double spawners aren't really putting you in a tough spot. You know what I mean? And again, I don't mind Furnace. I mean, Furnace can be annoying, but I don't mind it conceptually because it doesn't stack. Right? That's the big difference, is spawners that stack versus spawners that don't. And since Furnace doesn't stack, it doesn't bother me. Tombstone doesn't bother me either because it's really you can't really stack skeletons in any meaningful way. Pro Clown saying, what is the reason that um, Dark Goblin isn't used much in esports as the most underrated card right now? Um, I disagree with it being the most underrated card. Dark Goblin's not that strong. Dark Goblin's good in very limited decks. And in most, most of the decks that are viable, there's a better option for a variety of reasons, right? So you talk about, like, why, like, a card is as good as its synergy, right? And Dark Goblin doesn't synergize well with a lot of the decks that are good in Clash Royale meta right now. The only real card deck that Dark Goblin synergizes great with is uh, is Goblin Barrel for or is, is in bait decks, and bait isn't super strong. You know, like you look at other options, right? You look at let's talk about Hog Rider for example. You see the Hoggy Q deck played by KK in Game One. Dark Goblin does not synergize well there because you give way too much value to Log. That's why Hog Princess isn't great either. But Dark Goblin's even worse because if it doesn't actually it doesn't give space. Um, Dark Goblin does not synergize well with the Royal Giant. There are better options for ranged troops behind the RG. Whether it's the E-Wiz to help with stun, whether it's the Firecracker to help clean stuff up that doesn't also die to log. A lot of things like that. So, you know, you look at it and you're like, it's, it's about synergy. And Dark Goblin's synergy is very low. Lightning in here for the Royal Giant. KK trying to stay alive in this matchup. 951 to 1211. And Igor again trying to flood the field. Just as the cage goes down, goes for the pig split. And now Igor back with the lead, 833 to 951, but the Royal Giant in high on the left-hand side. Baby Dragon Lumberjack on the right-hand side. This might be too much for Igor here. He ha has to focus on the RG, but that Baby Dragon going to do a ton of damage here. Musketeer comes out and comes out a little bit late, 403 on the right-hand side. And Igor, this E-Spirit getting through is going to be bad, and he has to go ahead to high with the E-Spirit himself. Seven forty on the right-hand side. This is tough. Igor cannot give up any other hits on that tower because it's going to be lightning lightning zone then. So that's to play a really strong defense here. Fireball in, pigs on. Arrows in as well, 223 remaining. So now suddenly it's KK in the danger zone. Brawler on the left-hand side gets one shot, two shots, three thought. That's GG. That's GG. KK just needs to get to his lightning, and that's going to be it. We're going to game number three here. KK does get to lightning. Igor doesn't go for the pig's block. Man, a lightning block could have won that one for Igor, and I feel like that might have been the better choice to attempt it. Yes, it's a low, a low percentage play, but I think that might have been a better call if, if Igor had attempted the lightning block. Instead, he tries to go in and, and beat out the lightning to tower. You're not going to do it. So GG, well played. Game number three coming. Um, Rich, is Musketeers a guarantee value? Uh, depends in the deck, right? The name of the game, folks, is Synergy. That's why you have meta decks and non-meta decks, right? Because meta decks operate off of, of course, what's strong right now, but also they create good Synergy. So a lot of those like mid-ladder decks, those weird decks, yes, you can say, oh, Witch or Wizard makes it mid-ladder, but also it's rando decks that don't meld well together, that that give up too much value, that have cards that don't complement each other in, in, in valuable ways. So Musketeer, great card in the right deck. Um, a lot of people asking still, um, I've already answered any questions about the CRL finals. I'm, you know, I don't know who will win, guys. Uh, I'm, getting this, I'm getting this question a lot. Um, but I have no idea. Well, that's why that's why they're gonna play. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. The 2020 Igor would have made that block. Made it maybe. Attempted it probably. That's the big difference. But I don't know. Um, 
lightning blocks are always hard to 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 choose, and I think people don't think about them that much, especially because lightning's not that popular in the meta right now. People are kind of like getting back to lightning being around. I see so few lightning block attempts being made. Um, so you know, I'd like to see more, and that would have been a great situation for it. But um, you know, didn't happen. Um, here's the thing about a lightning block, right? Is that if you if you attempt a lightning block and and they don't play the lightning yet, now they know you're trying to do it, and then they get this they, take, they try to stall you out until you uh, you give it up. So there you go. Um, say Kumar Davuluri says, "What do you think of the Clash Royale future? The future of Clash Royale? I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Some pretty fun stuff coming down the pipes. Here we go. Game number three coming." Here goes Igor going, most likely Hoggy Q in game three. And what in the world? Hog Mortar with Battle Healer. All right, folks, you want to see something different? Here we are. Um, Pranav saying, I think lightning blocks are overrated. Um, they don't offer much value, and you can cycle back to it again, not a big accomplishment. Um, well, if you get a positive trade for the lightning block, right? So, for example, five for six, you get that lightning out of cycle and open up your opportunities, right? So, in that last matchup, Igor had fireball and arrows. If he pulled off the lightning block, he could have fireball, arrows, and one. And if you want to talk about lightning blocks... Um, the brothers who founded Rise and Sun Esports, Show and K, Lightning Block Kings, and they have hundreds of videos of them doing Lightning Blocks to win games. But in that situation, Igor could have blocked with the Pigs or with the Zappies. Either way, um, with the Zappies would have been a plus two trade, the Pigs would have been a plus one trade, and then he had Fireball and Arrow, so could have gone and, gone and taken the win. And Jonathan Lewis with a great point. Um... When facing a, or with losing or a lightning block, take the lightning block. And player asking, could he have tried to block with recruits? Yes, but recruits are the more uh, recruits are an even are, are a negative trade rather than a positive trade. So I would have liked to see the block with the pigs instead, and then go with it with a spell cycle. This deck from Igor is craziness, though. Hog EQ Mortar with Battle Healer. What I don't understand, so we're talking about synergy here. I don't understand the battle healer in this matchup. To me, that is the weirdest card in this deck. Because battle healer benefits from proximity to other troops, but what other troops is battle healer going to be next to? Right, unless he's talking about using battle healer purely for pressure and hoping it gets on tower and stays, al stays alive for a long time. Battle healer seems like a really lost card here. A lost opportunity for a card slot, too. Graveyard in. Arrows to clear. Fireball on top of that. And some good damage here from the Skeletons. I just simply do not understand the Battle Healer here. Mortar does connect. Hog to the left-hand side. Cannon cart in, battle hero to pick up. That's two big hog shots. Does not get a third, though. This is feeling worse and worse for the Russian. Igor needs this to get preferably three, only gets two. Wants to stick the cannon cart on that side, and he does. That's actually really huge for Igor right here. Plus the delivery log combo. The nice lane switch here. And KK has to fireball the hog on defense. That's absolutely massive. Graveyard in. Ice Golem does come through, and that set of arrows could be devastating. The defensive EQ from Igor. So the high IQ play in this moment. 
Log trying to make room for the Hog Rider, and it does. Huge, huge move. Hog Rider does not get number two, but now we are very close. Triple Elixir flowing. 344. Arrows in cycle for KK. Hunter needs to defend, and that is the good, the good spot for the Hunter on graveyard defense. 184 left. Fireball goes to defend against the Hog here, and EQ cycle on the left-hand side. KK is very close to winning, but that Fireball not in cycle right now. Arrows to the right-hand side. Log trying to get through for the Hog Rider. Fireball gets in. Does the Hog hit? And it doesn't. KK gets the win before the Hog can hit. What a close photo finish here. But it is KK coming out on top. And a great, great ending between these two Clash Royale veterans. What a finish there for KK. That Hog was so close to getting it done. So very close. But KK does hold on there for a big time win. Next up is going to be Sandbox versus Rad, folks. So we're going to see the number three player in the world right now up against his countrymen in Rad. Um, and Sakina Fubzi saying, oh, sorry, Igor. Yeah, that was a rough one there. Igor is playing a good game. Struggling. I mean... You're trying to defend against, uh, I mean, weird deck for Igor with the Battle Healer. Trying to defend against the Graveyard with, with Spear Goblins that get uh, taken off by the arrows so easily. Do I think any card is broken in this meta? I think I think that pigs are a bit broken. Um, and that's why you're seeing, uh, seeing pig counters in almost any deck until they get played. Um, is E-Giant still broken? E-Giant's still polarizing, but st but, uh, but its matchups have gotten worse with the, uh, with the nerf. When is Oyasu playing? I think Oyasu might not play. I'm not entirely sure because he's already eliminated. Um, waiting to hear if he does, but Oyasu's already can't move on to the next round. He's guaranteed like bottom position, so I don't know if he's going to show up or not. Um, Igor could have won, says Lalo. Yeah, maybe that, but that was a that was a tough matchup for him. Um, Jonathan Lewis saying, think if he would have used Valk as a battle healer. Exactly. I don't remember if he used Valk before that, but uh, man, that was brutal. Um, Rich getting many Indian viewers. Yeah, hello to everyone in India. Good to see you. Glad to have you here. Sluggish Crow, fun math fact. There are 180 billion possible decks in Clash Royale games. A lot of decks that are played by any players. Yeah, lots of different combinations. Some of them better than others. Um, um, Tele, Tele RBZ saying, Spawners are annoying, but the Witch is a spawner. That is terrible. Uh, yeah, but the Witch isn't strong. The Witch is very, very weak, so I don't, I don't really mind Witch. I never see Witch and go, oh, no, I'm going to lose. I see Witch and I go... Yay, probably a free win. Um, Pranav saying, I see a very weird idea of how the Battle Healer is with a hog deck, but it's like making a minor graveyard deck. Um, just because minor acts as a tank doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't think that was a great synergy. Um, suggest me a good golem deck in this meta. No, I'll suggest you to bin your golem. I don't I don't like golem in the meta. Um, I am an anti, I am an anti golem forever. Golem hit golem haters for life. Graveyard was huge for KK, says Snowy. Yep, that's that was the win condition, so that would make sense. Um, what deck am I using right now? Right now I'm using Minor Wall Breakers, uh, Magic Archer, Nato. Um, let's see. Um, mid ladder Witch is so annoying. Yes, but after once you get to like 6k and above, which probably shouldn't give you any trouble. Um, did Morton leave competitive and focus on content creation? No, Morton is ranked number, uh, let's see, number 8 in CRL standings. So he's just going to get ready for World Finals. But no, he did not leave competitive for content creation. He is also doing content creation. Um, I think he might take... I, mean, I think he might... He'll probably take a break a bit for November. I hope he does in the second half of November to um, get ready for World Finals. But no, he's number eight on the world rankings right now. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, best deck according to you. Um, whichever one I'm running, whichever one my opponent's running against me, probably the best deck in the game. What's the most damaging card in your opinion? I don't know if that's an opinion. I think it's Skeleton Army does the most damage the fastest. It just gets killed easily. Um, Rich, has any player ever achieved 1,000 Grand Challenges? Actually, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and open this up, because if I go to Royale API, you can actually go to um, look at the... the I don't think anyone's ever done 1,000 Grand Challenges. Um, let me see if I can get the, um, I don't know what page it is on the Royal API website. Sandbox versus Rad is up next, folks. Just waiting on that match to start. 
Um, but let's see. Somewhere around here. I'm trying to remember where they put this. Is it under players? Um, I wish they had... If it's, it's just this Royal API. If, you're, if anyone from Royal API is watching, you should have a record section. Who is number one? Mohammed Light is currently number one on the... Um, uh, Mohammed Light is number one on the uh, CRL standings. Um, let's see. The let's see, GC Portal is that what we're looking for? Who is the all-time? Mm, no, that's not what we're looking for. Hold on. Is Sparky a good card? Says the Fox. Not really. Sparky ain't great. Sparky ain't great. Um, where is Rad? We're waiting on Rad. Okay, so um, the all-time well, that's ladder finishes. So um, Hazard is or Hazard slash Igor. Igor is the number one all-time ladder player. Wero though, right behind him. And Grand Challenges. Um, let's see. No, this is not. I'm looking for I'm looking for all-time. Let's see. Let's go to history. And. Why can't I find this for Grand Challenges? Oh, is it over here? Um, GC12 wins? I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find out the exact place because Royal AP. Here we go. Um, so in Grand Challenges, this has actually changed since I last checked. Because for a long time, the leader in most Grand Challenge wins, 12 win Grand Challenges, was, B was B-Rad, who currently is at 540. Um, but the, the current leader... In most 12-win Grand Challenges completed, at 664 is Schwarzen. So Schwarzen is currently the, the overall historical leader. And that changed. He was top five beforehand, but he must have been grinding GCs because 664 now. So that's the closest one to 1,000. Um, it's going to take a while for anyone hit, to hit 1K. That's not easy to do. Um, but yeah, there you go. Schwarzen, all-time leader in most Grand Challenges won. At 664, followed by B-Rad at 5, 580, Wings at 545, Cody Go at 484, and I'm not sure who that is at 466. Morton comes in at number six on that chart with 462 grand challenges completed. So here we go. Elsiop and Jupiter King. Elsiop currently in fourth place in the division. Jupiter King in ninth. Jupiter needs a win here to stay in the hunt for the top six. Elsiop wants to protect that position. A loss for Elsiop would threaten his top six and his playoff position. Giovanni Bergens asking, how do you qualify for CRL? Top 1,000 ladder. So two people asking what deck I'm playing on ladder. The one Jupiter King's running. He has Bomb Tower as his last card here. I am running this variation. I've been debating going to the Valk version, but I like this one for the cycle and for the single target DPS of the night. Hog goes to the right-hand side. Nader to the middle. Hog still gets one hit, though. Hey, Mance Raider, 6 a.m. Going to run start the day. Have a good stream. Thank you very much, Mance Raider, for uh, when I, I love seeing when you come on to mod at any point. So really appreciate it. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Excert asking, is Igor out? Um, I don't know if he has any more games left. I think he might be at the end of his games. Um, no, 14 is the total number of games, but Igor is no. Yeah, he's no longer in contention. Igor is out. He will not qualify for the next round. And Jupiter King Nato's to the middle here. Nato plus log combo, and that's a nice Tesla out of Elsiop to control. This is an interesting matchup because Jupiter King has phenomenal hog counters in both the Nato and the Bomb Tower. But Elsiop is happy for Bomb Tower to be played because he wants to do that right there. He wants to EQ. He's not even worried about getting hog shots, he's worried about getting EQ damage in. Elsiop has great ways to counter the minor wall breakers. He can pick up the miners. And of course, that wall, those wall breakers between the log and the Tesla 
should usually be stopped. Nato here again, and this time Nato's to King. I like that move here. Avoids the damage. That's a, you know, that timing can be tricky. But Jupiter gets it right. So right now, Jupiter with the lead. He needs to start varying his minor placement, and he does. Goes to the back this time. Two Magic Archers, and look at that second Magic Archer with the Knight in front of it. Nice play here by Jupiter King. Oh my word, that was beautiful. Got the second Magic Archer down, got the Knight in front of it, and LCOP knows it's over. GG, well played. Game number one, Jupiter King. With a beautiful... Oh man, I wish we had... I, I need to figure out how to get... Replay is actually harder than you might think, folks, um, to get done correctly. But man, that was a very, very nice... Very nice Magic Archer there on the night. Got the great lineup. Opportunistic with the Magic Archer is the best way to put it. Opportunistic with it. Got it done. Got the Knight down to protect it. <sighs> there you go. That Marcher was beautiful, says K. Misson. Yep, absolutely was. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, is Knight a good card? Certainly, especially in certain decks. Um... Let's see. Uh, other questions are about CRL. I was in top 1,000, but I missed my bracket, so I didn't qualify. Yeah, well, that'll do it. Um, but, man, that, that Magic Archer combo was really, really nice. That's the thing about Magic Archer, right? Like, sometimes you Magic you, you magic Archer NATO, and you spend that full 7 to get damage. But a good opportunistic Magic Archer, especially if you can protect it the way we just saw there from Jupiter King, that's where that power goes. So Jupiter LCOP up now. Um, let me ask how many more matches we have. What is better, Pekka or Mega Knight as an HP tank? So again, guys, the answer is Snowy asking what's better, Pekka or Mega Knight. Um, depends on what you're running. Synergy, folks. There's not one answer to these questions. And bait for Jupiter in game number two. Gets a little bit of damage on tower. Mega Knight for Elsiop. LCL looking like he was preparing for Royal Hogs, potentially. And set up against Bait. And well defended here by Jupiter. Miner does get on. And a full barrel Fire Spirit push. Lightning comes out, but not without a ton of damage here. Nicely done by Jupiter. Great pressure. Log not in, so knows that he's fine there. Zap is the mark on the right-hand side, 1742, Princess at the Bridge. Pressure, pressure, pressure from Jupiter. Snowball Skeletons, nice work here. Nice, perfectly timed by Jupiter King. When Jupiter King is at his best, he is an S-tier player. The challenge with Jupiter King is how often is he at his best? That's where I would say, you might say that Jupiter and Air Surfer are similar. Jupiter and Air Surfer are both S-tier players when they are playing their best Clash Royale. But the question of will they bring their best on any given day is the thing that keeps them from achieving that full the, the full measure of their potential. That time a bit of a that, that time he couldn't put the skeletons down because of the magic because uh, of the mother witch and a missed lightning here for Elsiop. That's an unfortunate miss there for Elsiop as the barrel goes to the back now with the miner up front and that's going to be tower down on the right hand side. This might be a quick 2-0 here for Jupiter. Why am I calling the Zap Lightning? Did I call the Zap Lightning? Pretty sure I said Zap. I might have cut. Did I say Lightning? I don't know. I'm saying a lot of words out loud. But H saying, why are you calling the Zap Lightning? I must have I must have called the Zap Lightning, guys. Apparently I did. It happens. It is early and I've been casting a lot. Every once in a while. I don't know if you guys know this, but sometimes people misspeak. Oh, the prediction Zap attempt from LCOP, but the skeletons go high rather than low. GG, well played. 
Jupiter, just a little bit ahead. A tiny bit ahead the whole way. And, uh, man, nicely shut it down. I guess I mentioned lightning. I think I said something about lightning. Okay. Oh, well. Clash Ice watching from Japan. Well, thank you for joining. Morrow mentioned the very nice Fire Spirit place. And Pranav saying, I don't know if I'd compare Jupiter to Air Surfer completely. The men's momentum pretty much unstoppable during 2021 of spring, but fell off during Fallen Worlds. <clears throat> you mean spring of 2020? I don't know. I would, I would compare them. I, I mean, you, people can make their own comparisons, um, but I would compare them. They're both guys who, in this one thing, when they are at their best, they are S tier, but their best is not always there. I think that's fair to say for both Air Surfer and Jupiter King. Um, up next going to be Higher versus Igor. Excited for this one. Higher coming off of an amazing 10 days of Clash Royale. Um, so that's pretty great. Neo Goku saying, how many people from this list make it a CRL directly? This list is not, this is not a CRL competition, Neo Goku. This is a separate tournament. This is the Queso Cup, the fall split. It's a separate event. It's a lot of the same players from CRL, but this is a totally separate event. So there you go. Um, let's see. I would say 2.6 Expo is still good. Um, well, I've never heard of 2.6. I've heard of 2.9 and 3.0, and both of those are not great right now. Expo is not phenomenal in the, uh, in the meta, in the meta at the moment. Um... Navash saying, I want Mini Mentor and Pompeo in the World Final. Well, they both have chances. So there you go. Um, did Giant Skeleton make an appearance in competitive this meta? Somewhat. A little bit in um, Minor Giant Skeleton Loon. Not a whole lot. So there you go. And there you go with a lifetime ban. Someone got toxic in the Twitch chat. And uh, ban hammer. I need to get a ban hammer animation that, like, is... is um, uh, that can come out on the screen when I throw when I throw a nice ban in. Is it the same rules as CRL where they can't use the same card in two decks? Yes. K missing. This is dual mode. Dual mode is the is the competitive format now, um, and it will be at least for the time being. So dual mode is what competitive is based around. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, what is your decision to get consistent in VR, not relying on momentum? Um, it's a mentality thing, right? Like so one thing one thing for me is I know for me, if I feel myself starting to get frustrated, I just put the game down, right? Like I'm very tiltable. I'm very tilt. Uh, tilt gets me. Tilt gets me hard. So um, especially when I'm like really trying to push, if I lose two in a row, I put my phone down and walk away. Like I, just, I stop playing for a while. Um, I, can't, I don't sit there and grind if I start losing games in a row because then you start getting frustrated. Like it's managing your mentality. Some players don't need to manage that mentality. They already have that locked in. Um, but the, the tilt is real, folks. So that's why I try to avoid it. Um, hey, Rich, can we get a schedule for this? Um, yes, somewhere. I don't know where they've posted the official schedule. Um, let me go ahead and ask if there is. Is there a schedule for um, viewers? Let me go ahead and ask that. Um, should Gla Classic and Grand Challenge need a rework? I would just reduce... I would create tickets and reduce their cost. That's what I would do. Um, when's the next game? When it starts... I'm just, I, this is a feed. I'll even show you right now. This is the feed as that's coming in from the production studio right now. And they just have it on the, the overall match um, list for the day of what we expected to see. Of course, some of those matches didn't happen. Um, so there you go. Um, someone asking if I ever finished top 1K. No, I'm not that good. I'm not a top 1K player. I am a good broadcaster. That's my job. But, you know, no one asks Al Michaels if he's won a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, I've never finished top 1K. That's really good. Um, so, if you've ever finished Top 1K, congratulations. That's amazing. From Nepal. You know Nepal, right? Yes, I do. Good to see you. Um, it meant 3.0. Yeah, no. Expo, um, Expo just isn't strong in the meta right now. Expo, like, two, the two most popular decks, Expo and 2.6 Hog Cycle, they are both bad and competitive. They're popular because they've been around for a long time, they have outplay potential, and they're good against the middle of ladder, and they're free to play, but they're not good competitive decks. Some players can push up high against them, but that's different. Um, why does nobody talk about Mega Knight being way too strong? People talk about it. They're mostly wrong.
Igor going mortar and going with a mortar variation that might be more his style. This is what you want to see when you watch Igor. Higher playing for a shot at the top six right now. This is an important match for Higher. For Igor, it's important as well. He does not want to lose here and slip below Rad in the standings into the relegation zone. But certainly, maybe more at stake for Higher. Interesting no spell pigs variation for the recent CRL Monthly Final Champion. I'm curious about a no spell variation. Now, th what's nice about this is it's always a risk to go no spell. You rely on tower damage alone, although Magic Archer as a secondary win condition certainly helps in this kind of situation. But what's nice about it in dual mode is it makes it real hard for your opponent in game number two and three to make spell choices based off. You can't make any choices based off spells. It really makes analysis more difficult there. So I do like this. Player 19, 375, asking what's the relegation zone? The bottom two in the standings. 14th place in the group is guaranteed relegation down to the second division. And 13th has to play for their spot. Has to play to decide if they're going to stay in Div Division 1 or go down to Division 2 for the next season. Look at that Magic Archer. Look at that Magic Archer. Boom, 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 boom. 1349 on the right-hand side. Higher in a good spot. Mega Knight picks up on the right-hand side. Has to contend with this Miner and the Spear and the Stabs on the left-hand lane. Interesting Mortar Miner variant here out of Igor. You don't often see Spear Goblins and Stab Goblins. But for the moment, the advantage goes to higher, ahead by a little under 300 HP. Magic Archer sets up to the right-hand side. And the Heal Spirit keeps those pigs up a little bit longer. I don't know if they touch. Might get one. And Igor now wanting that Furnace off the board because of that pressure. And that's going to be goblins down, pigs in, heal spirit behind. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And Igor can't put the real defense on that because of the magic archer. So he has to go spears low with a snowball. And higher playing this to perfection. This is, this is really brilliant gameplay from higher. And Igor knew he was trapped there, too. Heal Spirit in, Magic Archer, and that's a GG. What a nice game from Higher. What a great, what a great game from Higher. Fun to watch. You talk about underrated. I said it on CRL this weekend. Higher is an underrated player. Has been for a long time. Um, those those glasses go hard AF, bro. No joke. Vision, thank you very much. Um, these glasses are from my favorite sunglass company. I've been a fan for a long time, and um, they became a sponsor of the channel. Uh, we haven't done anything in a while together, but they came a sponsor over the summertime. But these are Gooders. They are my favorite sunglasses. They're the only sunglasses I wear. There's the link if you want to get some. Um, but I have like 30 pairs of them. I'm all about it. I'm Snowy saying Hire is my favorite CR player. Uh, yeah, no, Hire is crazy. Um, um, Tella RBZ asking this question. Look it up. You have Clash Royale. Open up your phone. There you go. That's my answer to your question. I've seen you say that, ask that question like 30 times. Just look it up. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to see any more matches of him, of higher. I think we see one more after this. Not entirely sure. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Igor's favorite. Oh, that's Igor's favorite mortar, mortar deck. Good to know. Um, let me look at the chat here for a minute. Remember time when entire crowd chat when Igor played mortar? Yeah, those days are gone. Hard truth. Um... I don't know if there was an, if there was a crowd, then maybe they would shout when Igor played Mortar. You know, um, Buzz Royale saying thirty five bucks is a really good price point for a pair of shades. Yeah, good good thing these are twenty five. Let's go. Um, yeah, f um, Fubsy saying best thing is you still own many pair that many pairs if you didn't support, sponsor you. Yeah, I I already I already owned like five pairs before we started working together. So I'm huge on I'm huge on these bad boys. 
Um, Phoenix Clasher asking, hey, Rich, is the Queso Cup an invite-only event? Um, there's, it's not like Clash CRL monthlies. Um, there is a play-in competition to get in a second division. So it's a mix of invite and, and open qualifiers. I don't know the exact way that Queso Cup works, but all these have some ways to play in. And Igor seeing the snowball cycle just goes ahead and cycles his NATO for damage. Have I ever been a CRL pro? No, I've been casting Clash Royale League since 2018, though. I've been casting competitive Clash Royale overall since 2018, so of course, CRL being the main part of it. Graveyard in with that cannon cart tanking slightly. And the King Tower activation. Oh, man. Higher played that one tile too low. One tile out of position. And Igor activates King. Oh, boy. Higher can still win this because of the mortar and the cannon cart. But, man. And Igor just... Is, is Igor playing pure spell cycle? I'm not sure. Ken Ken saying yes. And that would be very Igor-ish to be playing just pure spell cycle. Is Molt in the CRL? Asks uh, Tela RBZ. Nope. Next match is going to be Greco and Jack. And by the way, folks, for those of you who aren't getting enough Clash Royale today with this APAC region, EMEA is later today, the European Middle East Africa region. Um, and there's going to be Mohammed Light versus Ruben today in EMEA. And that's going to be on Cashman's channel later today. Cashman over on Twitch. So if you want to see a great matchup, Ruben versus Mo Light, that's later today on Cashman's channel. Graveyard into the left-hand side, so not just Spell Cycle here for Igor. I mean, once you get to the Baby Dragon, obviously. It's a pretty classic GY deck from Igor. And, cur and classic for the newer meta for higher. Of course, that King Tower activation is so massive. Already here asking if we see a Pandora match. I don't know if we're seeing Pandora. I'll ask. Fifteen ninety six left hand side. Despite the King Tower activation, higher saying in this one. The big question is when we get the triple, does that King Tower activation? change the math here. Perfectly tied game right now. Spears low. Cannon cart distracted. Fireball comes in. This would be a good counter push though. Healthy cannon cart. Spears get in front of it. Not exactly what higher wanted. The high Tesslier to set the line. But higher stacking nicely here at the bridge. And the Hunter trying to make room here. I think Ice Wiz picked up, and it did. So now Igor with a pretty solid lead as we go into the final minute. 1079 to 1548, Mortar High. And Knight does pick up again. Graveyard in. And Snowball trying to do enough to help out against the Fireball with the, with, against the Ice Wiz and the King Tower. Not many connections, but a Mortar does get in. Two baby dragons. Night high. 29 seconds left. NATO does not get the splash damage. Mortar goes to the inside, but Graveyard all over tower. Barb in as well. GG well played. We're going to game number three. Oh, and uh, guys, here's the, the news on Pandora. Just got this from the League Ops, League Operations, um, that 
Pandora had to play off stream because he was in a hurry today. He won versus Yuya and lost 0-2 to higher. So we'll not be seeing Pandora on stream today. But Pandora will be on stream on Saturday during the regional championships. So regional finals, you will be seeing Pandora on stream on Saturday. Um, that will also be on Cashman's channel early, early Saturday morning for those of you guys who are in the U.S. And um, let's see. And, f and if you do want to see more, of course, um, I'm back on Saturday with the EMEA Regional Championships. That's right here on this channel. And I'm back on Sunday again with the Latin American Regional Championships. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those, subscribe to my channel. Let me go through the link in the chat here, actually, to make it really easy for you guys to subscribe. Does that button work? No, it doesn't. Stream Deck not OP still. Um, subscribe to my channel, guys. And uh, make sure you turn on the notifications. But Saturday, um, that's going to be at, I think, 10.30 West, 1.30 East. And Sunday at 11.30 West, 2.30 East. That's going to be the regional finals for Europe, Middle East Africa, EMEA. And then the Latin American finals on Sunday. So there you go. Next match is going to be Greco versus Jack. Let me ask if that's the final match of the day. Um, I love the Surgical Goblin emote span on CRL final. Yeah, there you go. Um, who's playing next? I think it's Greco versus versus Jack. Uh, I think I don't know if that's the last match or not. Um, so there's our info, but we still do have our um, we still do have our final game of. Uh, did we already finish Igor Hire, or do we have one more? I'm a little bit lost here for a second. I'm trying to do too many things. Um, Greco and Jack it might be the last matchup. It depends on if Rad shows up or not. If Rad shows up for his final match, then we will have one more match after Greco Jack. Otherwise, Greco versus Jack will be the last match of the day. Um, what do I think of Gems? Will think he'll ever make CRL? Um, sorry to say, I have no idea who Gems is. So, I'm not sure who you're talking about. So, there you go. Um, already here saying Pandora is the best player. He's leading the group right now, and he's certainly talented. Pandora, um, what are, what, where did he end up on the on the standings? He ended up 10th overall on the uh, CRL standings this year, so certainly has had a good a good run of it in 2021. Um, what time is it for you, Rich? It is 8.25 in the morning for me. Um... Probably the best 3.0 Expo player. Well, 3.0 Expo is not competitive, is not competitively viable, and also uh, you got to have a little more ver variety. Um, you know, it's there. I will say this: there are few Expo players who turn into great competitive players. Um, you know, I'd say the Air Surfer is the best Expo player turned competitive player, but people who like master, master, master Expo. Hey, my hair's all over the place today. People who master, master, master Expo don't typically turn into phenomenal competitive players. Um, and I'm wondering if it's because the, and well, as hog cycle players sometimes do, right? Lucas was a was a top tier hog cycle player. Um, Jack has been up and down in competitive, obviously. Um, but uh, I mean, Elyasu didn't turn out turn into uh, into a great um, into a into a phenomenal competitive player either. Expo is just such a different style of gameplay. And that's a great point. Um, um, YMNT, YMNTIU, Yimintao, um, making the point here that it is a different style of gameplay. And yeah, Expo just does not translate well into being a... If you're an Expo one trick, there are other one tricks that translate better into competitive play. Expo does not. Why don't I make more gameplay explaining videos? Uh, mostly because they take so much time. Um, Boaz, Rich, do you know how to speak Hebrew? Lo zacharti kol avrich lamadati aval animet the better katsati vrit. Higher splitting with his zappies here, and Igor going more off meta hog, hog dark prince. I believe the prize pool for this event is thirty-two thousand dollars, folks. If Igor loses, can he still be in a match? Um, this is the last. This is the second to last match of the day. Igor will not be making playoffs, and right now the question is whether or not Higher will make playoffs. Igor is facing um, relegation, and Higher is competing for a spot in regional finals. Hog 
Hog has way more variety of decks and does translate better than the other cycle decks. IMO says blast. Yeah, the skills that the skills that support the skills you learn in Hog Cycle are more are more applicable to other cycle decks or to gameplay overall. But the only reason that 2.9 or 3.0 Expo is still popular is because it has specific outplay potential against, you know, players anywhere below the S to A tier level, and because uh, it's a free-to-play friendly deck that people, the people who've been playing a long time have, you know, leaned on maxing out. Does Fishboy pull the hog? Not to a King Tower, or not, not all the way through. King Tower already activated, though. So Pier just minor control. Interesting choice here by Hire in game number three to not go with a, with a main win condition, just going with the minor plus poison. So far, it's working, though. And Igor. Hog Inferno Tower Rocket. And Inferno Tower, not the best in this situation. Maybe was expecting there to be a uh, bit of a beatdown from higher, but not the case. Log comes in. Dark Prince gets pulled. Recruits do not turn. 710 the mark on Igor's top left tower as he cycles Rocket. Has to worry about this right-hand side, does Igor. And he's not going to. Waves the white flag. GG well played. Higher taking the 2-1 to one win. And I believe that guarantees him a spot in the top six. We'll see in a moment. People asking about things like Fantasy Royale and things like 20 Win Challenge. And I have no answers for either of those two things. I don't know about the, the plans there. Hopefully we see those. But no idea. But GG to hire. We should, we'll see standings here in a bit. Going to find out. Um, Greco versus Jack is our next match. How am I spectating? Asked Tele, um, Tele RBZ. This is a clean feed. So this feed is actually coming from a studio in Spain for me to look at. So I'm not spectating in game. I have I have most of these players, or lots of these players. Not, not as much in the APAC region. But a lot of these players on my friends list. But no, this is all coming from, an, uh, from, a, from a feed being assembled in Spain and sent out for people in all different languages to use. Callum Evans, new player here. What's a good counter for Mega Knight having trouble against it? There are tons of counters for Mega Knight. Let's look at the standings first and we'll talk about it. Pandora and Sandbox atop the standings, both at 9 and 4. They're both guaranteed through. Jack and Line, I believe, are both guaranteed as well. So now it's about Greco. Um, if Greco loses here to Jack, that opens up the door for either Elsiop, uh, for, I believe for Elsiop to go above him. If Greco loses, his game, his match play would be seven and six, and his game differential would be one. Elsiop would finish also at seven and six with a game differential of three. So this is a big one for Greco. Greco needs a win here to stay in the top six. Jack has already guaranteed his spot. So this is a big, big, big one for Greco. Now you might say, hey, Jack is a Jack and Greco are friends. They're both from the same country. But Jack is in third place right now, which is, in, which is a money spot. So this is, there's something on the line for both of them. If Jack loses here, he would potentially, eh, he might still keep his spot up there above line. I think he would still keep his spot up there against line, even if he loses his 0-2. So Jack in a good spot. Greco um, in the challenging position. So we'll see what happens. LCOP sitting there hoping that Jack takes Greco out. Matthew, any news on CRL teams? Yeah, it's never happening again. That's the news. Very, very unlikely. I, can, I do not see a situation in which teams return to CRL. Um, so there you go. Um, you probably miss, miss casting in front of a live audience. Um, well, to be honest, I've only cast in front of a live audience twice for CRL World Finals in Japan and CRL World Finals in the U.S. I guess technically at the World Cyber Games, but there was no real audience for, for the, way, the way that was working. Um, so yeah, we didn't we didn't have live audiences in studio for CRL ever. Um, there's a thumbnail, a non-vigilante. I don't know why you're not seeing it. 
but yes, there is a um, there is definitely a, uh, a thumbnail there. So let's see. Um, we should be having our final game, Greco and Jack, here in a moment. And that'll be it. That will be done for the day. It's been a fun day for so far, for sure, guys. Guys and gals. Uh, let's see. Knight, Goblin, Oh, yes. To talk about countering Mega Knight. Um, yeah. Mini P.E.K.K.A. counters Mega Knight. P.E.K.K.A. counters Mega Knight. Prince counters Mega Knight. Um, Goblin Cage counters Mega Knight. Knight counters Mega Knight. Um, a lot of those tanky um, single-target DPS troops on their own counter Mega Knight. There are lots of two-card combinations that counter Mega Knight. And um, even Bandit. Bandit, I have a, sh a short on this channel that shows how you can counter, you can fully counter Mega Knight for a plus four trade with a Bandit, right? So um, lots of options to counter Mega Knight. The big problem that Mega Knight creates is if you've overcommitted and then they play Mega Knight. So if you overspend in one lane, they drop a Mega Knight on your overspend and then take advantage, that's where Mega Knight becomes a problem. So my, my, my advice, if Mega, Knight's, if Mega Knight's killing you, my advice is start being a little bit more judicious in your spending of Elixir and um, make sure you're not overcommitting. And some people saying they didn't see a thumbnail. Um, let me go ahead and check what I look at because I believe that the thumbnail is there. Um, oh, that's weird. Why is it not showing up? Because I definitely have a thumbnail loaded. It shows up on my YouTube page but not on the search parameters. That's very strange. Huh. Because I can see the I can see it on my main page, but when I but in search it didn't show up. So not sure why that is, folks. Did Buff Mac retire? As far as I know, yes. So Jack going Golem Night Witch. Interesting choice here from Jack. Yeah, interesting enough, folks. I see the thumb. I see a thumbnail here, so I don't really know why that's not functioning correctly. Um, let me go ahead and try this one more time, and maybe I'll reload the thumbnail and see if that fixes things. I'm gonna try reloading it right now, as we are at our last game of the day. By the way. Perfect timing. But hopefully that fixed the thumbnail issue. Lumberjack gets in for two shots. Lumberjack is so compelling because even at the end, you saw like that was a one-shot uh, Lumberjack and it got two shots. Pro Noob says, I noticed the thing, you wear sunglasses when you're streaming on your channel but not when you cast monthly finals. Yes, because that's not my channel. And Supercell does not want me wearing um, sunglasses during CRL broadcasts, so I don't. But on my channel, it's my channel, so I do what I want, and I want to. So I wear them on my, on my channel. There you go. And what about Azelius? As far as I know, Azelius is also retired. So Jack just spamming golems to the right-hand side right now. Nicely countered on the musky. Well timed. Out of Jack. You can counter Musketeer fully with Barb Barrel. Again, there's a short on my channel about that as well. And one of the funny things about the shorts is there's so many comments on that one about like who sends a Musketeer by itself. And there's a great example of a Musketeer not being totally by itself. Finishing defense, crosses the bridge, Valk goes down to the Barb Barrel, and then Musketeer gets countered by it fully. So, you know, it's so funny, the number of people who comment on technique videos and go, yeah, but this never happens. There's an example in a high-level competitive match between Greco and Jack of the bar barrel counter to, to musketeer technique being used to perfection. Final 90. Very close. No big spell for Jack. The only direct damage he has is NATO which ain't much for direct damage. So as long as Grieco can keep shutting this down at the bridge and not letting too much of a stack, doesn't overcommit too much. And that might have been the overcommitment that, that Jack needed. Plus four elixir advantage right now in triple. Graveyard down. If Jack can defend this graveyard effectively, 
and that is an if. But if he can, ah, that's maybe, maybe a bit too much damage. Yeah, he's, an, he's not going to beat out Poison. And there you go, there's the cycle. If he could have defended that graveyard, Jack had an actual chance. But he wasn't able to, so that's going to be a GG, and we're going to game number two. If Jack had been able to keep the damage off tower there, there was a possibility, but... There you go. Yeah, this is the last match of the group stage. You're absolutely right. Yep, we're just this is it. We're we're finishing the we're finishing the round robin, folks. This is the last match of the day. Um players point up there. Um Gringo can't pressure Jack. Um can just golem in the back. Well, didn't matter. Um Skeleton is the is a useless card. In what situation? Was it was it was Skeleton in one of those decks? Um, or you talking Skeleton in general is useless. Um, which retired player would you like to see come back? Um, most players who are retired, I think, um, should stay retired. Um, you know, I'm partial to the God RF, but also, you know, whenever, whenever someone feels like it's time to retire, it's time to retire. Um, was Skeleton in one of those decks? Um, because Skeletons is one of the, is a great card in the game overall. Um... Mitch Pokemon. Was there any Lava Loon players in the day's games? There might have been one Lava Loon minor deck early in the early in the day, but um, I don't think we've seen much in the way of Lava Loon today. Um, An on vigilante saying Jack probably saying his spells for the next two games. Yeah, I guess. Interesting choice there for Jack. Um, let's see. Any other chat stuff? I need to respond. Let's see. Why this good players retire with the good prizes? Because they already played three years of competitive clash. They played 2018, 2019, and 2020. And competitive clash is exhausting. So they decided to be done. Um, there were a lot of players who by 2020 were burnt out. Because the grind to be at the top level for CRL is so insane. So there were a lot of players here. Man, I, this, this is getting cut. This thing right here. That's getting cut, dude. For sure. Um, the competitive grind is brutal for Clash Royale. And so a lot of players retired because they were just... They were exhausted. It was time to move on. And um, Hari Prakash saying player, over 20 players often move on. They usually move on, yeah. Will b right ever be back to CRL? Probably not. He's got like a quarter million subs on YouTube and he's doing great. No reason to go play in CRL for him. Is Surgical Goblin back? No, and I don't, I don't expect him to return. He keeps teasing it, um, but, you know, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Not in any meaningful way. Don't you miss team format? Yeah, I like I like team I like team format as a viewer. I like the storylines, um, but teams are not coming back. So, um, and skeletons. I don't know anyone who's saying skeletons are a really important card that's critical to a wide variety of decks. So, I'll leave that there. Skeletons are good and very strong and very important for their players. Are there any new players in the top? Yeah. Um, you know, Sandbox, I mean, the, the big ones this year, I mean, if you look at the top, if you look at the top four, right? Look at the top, if you look at the top four, Mo Light is number one, and he did, um, he played for kicks at the end of CRL East in 2020, but um, yeah, Mo Light had one season of CRL play. Lucas had one season of CRL play, um, just the fall split for both of them. Sandbox never played teams in CRL, and Viper. So the top four are all new blood. So it's one of those things where, like, people are talking about, like, people talk about all these veterans who are gone. The top four, who are amazing, are all guys who entered into competitive play within the within the last year or so of this time frame. And we have great guys coming up for next year. We just saw Audriel and Arden Toas this weekend. Will Expo ever be meta again? It might be meta, but it'll, I don't know if it will ever be competitively viable. But it might be ladder. So interesting slow start here. Zap on both sides. What's that? I don't know. I'm saying I miss 2v2, to be honest. I do miss 2v2. That's for sure. 2v2 was, was something really great about the team format. Teams was fun to watch, but teams also had a lot of flaws. There were a lot of flawed things about Team CRL. There are flawed things about Solo CRL, too. But... 
there were a lot of problems. There were a lot of major flaws with Team CRL, and Team CRL was better for viewers and better for a select number of pros who had access to teams, but it was worse for the majority of the player base. So, you know, it depends on what your goal is of CRL. Well, we have not had many staring contests at all. I mean, I can't even remember the last one I, I was here for. Um, hmm, let me look at my wall here. I have some comic books back here. Some Why the Last Man. I should reread Why the Last Man. Maybe Preacher. I should read some Preacher, actually. Garth Ennis is great. Oh, here's an egg that I carved in shop class in high school. Uh, oh, are they going to play cards now? Here we go. Skeletons. Wait, did Greco have skeletons twice? No, he played Graveyard first. Why aren't they placing, said um, ZVJ. Well, and it used to be much more common for there to be what we call a staring contest, meaning both players wait until double elixir to play. Um, for whatever reason, maybe they don't like their starting hand or maybe they're playing a heavier deck. And that's a nice raged up balloon connection. Minor wall breakers. Oh, and the what the E barbs go away from the Pekka and shred the tower. Oh, the gamble not paying off for Greco here. Oh man, the the gamble to double and yeah, Greco just activates King Tower. Knows that's knows that was it. The gamble not paying off for Greco. His balloon gets shut down. His Pekka does not pick up the E barbs, and now we're going to, we're going to game number three. Is the Mega Minion good? Yes, it is. All right, game number three coming here in a minute. Um, which soda are you drinking? I'm not drinking soda. I'm drinking LaCroix. It's like sparkling water. There you go. Um, Surgical Wizard saying, I believe that everyone should participate in, participate in CRL instead of the top 1,000. It gives everyone a chance to play. The top 1,000 is, that is everyone participating in CRL. So to answer this question, the top 1,000 ladder is everyone being in CRL because you can make top 1,000 ladder. And I'll say this right now, and I'll say this unequivocally. There is no question in my mind. If you are incapable of making top 1,000 ladder, you are incapable of competing in CRL. It is a great barrier to entry. You are not going to succeed in CRL in any way, shape, or form if you are not capable of making top 1,000 ladder. And if you go, oh, but that makes it uh, too pay to win, or I need to have a max deck, you got to have one. And if you have one decent max, if you have one max deck that you can one trick and play it well enough to make top 1,000 ladder, which by the way, it's not that hard to max a deck anymore now that they've changed the progression so much. I, I, I that, that's an argument I'll never, I'll never buy on. Top 1,000 ladder is an excellent way to, is an excellent first step for qualifying. By the way, I will never make top 1,000 ladder. I am incapable of playing in CRL. Those two things go together. But yeah, that's my response to that one. Top 1,000 ladder is you are, everyone, if you're watching this, if you have Clash Royale on your phone, you are in CRL. You have a chance. It's, are you good enough? And Top 1000 Ladder is a great way to decide. So there you go. Um, let's see. Why don't I see Oyasu playing? Because he's not playing right now. Um, are you mad at me or something? I don't even know what your question is. You're, I, I don't see every question, guys. Um... Please don't tell me that CRL Finals is remote. I don't know if it's remote or not. I don't have the answers. I actually I answered that question earlier in the broadcast. I don't know if CRL is going to be live or remote. They haven't announced that yet. So there you go. Um, who do I think will win monthly finals? Uh, World finals? I have no idea. So guys, a lot of these questions I've... So, so, so one thing to note, some of these questions I've answered before multiple times today. So, um, you know, if I'm not answering your question when you ask it, sorry. But I'm answering some of these questions multiple times on the day. Um, is Mortar good? Depends on what deck you're running. Um, uh, Jonathan Lewis, if Clash Royale is pay to win, then all legendary deck would be best deck. But that isn't the case. This game is practice to win. I agree. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, I think it's pretty easy to get one max deck now. It's, it did not used to be hard. If you've been playing it for a while and you already have your cards to a certain level, the Pass Royale is so inexpensive and gets you to and can help you max so fast. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Um, Rich Boss or Bag in the LCQ? They're not in the same in the same group, are they? No, they're in different groups. They're in different groups. So both. How about that? Both. There you go. 
Um, Rich, do you play Brawl Stars? Uh, I have in the past. I don't play very much right now. Um, which pro do you think was the most consistent in his career? Uh, Morton. Morton's the most consistent pro. By far. Um, or Elsiop. Actually, Elsiop. That's that's a better call. Elsiop. Here we go. Game number three. Jack versus Greco. Let's go. Elsiop has made every CRL World Finals. Won five regional championships out of the six that he was in. Elsiop is by far the most competitive. And won no tilt worlds with um, uh, with China. Yeah. Um, Mayday Lee saying, can I get a shout out? No, you cannot, Mayday Lee. No shout outs for you, Mayday Lee. Thoughts on Morton, one of the best of all time. Adza, what can you do to actively better at CR? Pick an archetype, master it. Don't change your deck around. Don't run some rando mid-ladder deck that you think is good because it's your deck. Pick a deck. Pick an archetype that's meta. Level the cards that are level the cards that are typically meta around it. Have some flexibility with that. And grind that deck to get good. Morton versus Mo, who'd win? Well, considering how considering how bad Morton's matchups usually are and how good Mo's usually are, you have to pick Mo there just just based on matchup alone. Cuz Morton is the king of getting mad, bad matchups and Mo is the king of getting good matchups. But we might see it happen. Morton and Mo might happen at CRL World Finals. Who knows? So I think Pekka GY here for Jack. And obviously Mortar Miner EQ for Greco. Pretty much even right now, these two. Pro Noob with a great point. So those of you talking about pay to win and I can't access top 1,000 because of levels, my brother started playing eight months ago and he has already maxed three decks on a free-to-play account and upgraded his King Tower to 12. One of the big things that the Clash Royale dev team did this year was make progression way easier. Fireball, snowball, double push for the graveyard here on the left-hand side from Jack. Jack putting the pressure on. Mortar going to get a shot on the right-hand side, but... For the moment, Jack has the lead 1560 to 1276. Graveyard in. Nothing for the baby dragon. Hunter does come out finally. EQ on defense. Those of you playing EQ, keep that in mind. One of the key factors of playing uh, Earthquake-based decks against Graveyard. Especially Hog EQ, but even this one as well. And Jack Pekka's to the right-hand side to deal with this Onslaught of Mortars. 1120 to 1161. 80 seconds left. Greco has a spot at the in the regional finals hanging in the balance. A loss here means Greco is out. A win means he's in. And now Jack sets up Spawner to the left-hand side, EQ and Reply. Pekka does get down to pick up the Mortar. Has to contend with these Archers. Jack try or Greco trying his best to not let Mama Pekka cross and tank, but she does. Graveyard in, Archers down low. Fireball going to come get the Archers off the board here and get good tower damage. Snowball to make room as well. Doesn't do as much as he would have wanted, and now Mortar's going to get one shot on the right. No, it doesn't get the shot. Ewiz comes out, though, stops the stops the Miner. 706, 30 seconds left. Hunter working on that left-hand lane. 874, 706, and now cycle again here with the log for Greco. Mortar high, Pekka picks up. Graveyard in. We should see Fireball and Snowball here again. 
Snowball Fireball. EQ's gonna come through. Oh, but the Baby Dragon spits once, spits twice, spits thrice, and that's a GG. It looked like Greco had it, but at the last second, Jack's Baby Dragon gets on tower and eliminates Greco from the competition. Unbelievable. And Jack shuts it down. Absolutely shuts it down. And there's your final standings. With that, not only does Jack stay in the top six, he moves into first place. Jack finishes atop of the APAC group, followed by Sandbox and Pandora. What a crazy finish there. Line finishes in fourth place, higher in fifth, and Elsiop, because of Greco falling, Elsiop moves into the top six. So that's your going to be your six for the APAC regional finals. Jack, Sandbox, Pandora, Line, Hire, and Elsiop. What a great top six here. If you look down 7 through 12, those players avoid relegation. They will be in the league again for the next split. Rad has to compete against the top two from second division to stay in, to have a spot in that in the final one. And Oyasu is going to be uh, relegated down to the second division. Unbelievable. They are reviewing standings just to be sure here. But what a nice split here. Two Japanese players in Jack and Pandora, two from South Korea in Sandbox and Line, and two from China in Higher and Elsiop. So a really nice split, a nice balance between the three main t um, countries in the uh, APAC region. So what a finish, what a finish. Um, let's see. I think they're looking, they're reviewing, and there you go. So, guys, uh, that's it for today's show. That was a great one. Hope you really enjoyed it. Um, that's the end of the APAC region. You have your six qualifiers, but make sure that you don't miss. Later today on Cashman's channel, you're going to have the EMEA uh, final day of group play to decide the top six to qualify for Europe, Middle East Africa region. Then on Friday, the LATAM and North America, Central America regions will all play. We will have our four regions all done. Then this weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, you're going to have the regional finals. APAC regional finals early on Saturday. On Sunday right here, or on Saturday right here, for the EMEA finals and the LATAM finals, you can find the APAC and the, uh, the APAC and NACA finals will be on Cashman's channel on his Twitch channel. So uh, make sure that you haven't, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you go follow Cashman on Twitch uh, to make sure that you can see those actions. Of course, all of those will show up in your Clash Royale app. So if you don't know where to find the broadcast, open up Clash Royale, and I'll even show you where to do it. Here, I'll wa watch. I'll show you guys how to do this right now. All you got to do is open up your Clash Royale app and uh, go up there where it says live next to the next to the snow to the globe. You click live. And then you see where it says eSports. There's the live button right there. And look at that. Watch live. Oh, what? Wait, what happens when you press watch live? Um, this is going to get real meta here. But boom. Oh, there's an ad. <laughs> YouTube. Hold on. You hit watch live. And guess what? Now, there you go. Now you're watching me, watching you, watching me. You know what I mean? So there you go. That's how you go ahead and find it no matter what's happening. So Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow will be the last or later today. The last day of Europe group stage tomorrow, last day of LATAM and North America, Central America, and then Saturday and Sunday, two rounds each day, the APAC finals and EMA, EMEA finals on Saturday, LATAM and North America, Central America on Sunday, and that's going to be it for the day. Uh, if you're on Twitch, stick around for a minute. We're going to go find someone to go ahead and give a, a big raid to. If you're on YouTube, thanks so much for watching and supporting. Please hit subscribe if you can. That's a nice way to support the channel, and uh, I will see you guys back here on Saturday. Um, of course, as always, everybody on the... Uh, let me go ahead and do this really quick here. One second. Um, for those of you who are... One moment. Let me get this fixed. Um, burr, 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 burr. Why is that not working? And there we go. So as always, uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, remember to be excellent to each other. All right. Later.
All right.